Hello, Angie Houston. So I'm super excited tonight because we have Shorty, who is uh, one of my favorite people, and uh, he's going to talk about NX. And I've I've actually started kind of looking at NX. Uh, I've had a lot going on in my brain lately, but but I've looked at it. And it's, it's actually really cool, and I'm excited about it. So I'm I'm pretty stoked to see this demo. Uh, and we have a really cool panel tonight. Uh, all my favorite people. So uh, you guys say hello, Ilya. Ilya, actually, this is your first time on the panel. So welcome. And yeah. you want to tell us about yourself. Hi. Um, what should I tell you? I have a small company based in Bulgaria. We're doing Angular stuff and Node.js as well. And I'm also a teacher in Sofia University. And I organize the Angular meetups here. So I'm one of the co-organizers, sorry. <laughs> yes. So we have another meetup. So we should be like meetup, like pen pal, like meetup pen pals. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so are you, are you using NX? Have you seen NX? Is there, are you a beginner at NX? <clears throat> Uh, me? Yeah, I use it a little bit. I mean, it's still brand new, so that's why I'm excited. I, well, that's one of the reasons I'm here, actually, to uh, hear what uh, Shorty has to say about it. Awesome. So, um, awesome. Well, welcome. Yeah. All right, Keith, you want to say hello? You guys know Keith, but Keith, say hi. Hi, everyone. How's it going? It's good. And it's cold here in Houston. I think, Keith, I think out of tonight, I think you're the only one here in Houston with me. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy how cold it was. It was eighty degrees just like what, three, four days ago, and yeah, now we're down in the thirties. Yeah. Freezing. Yep. Okay. Hello. Uh, so, Rob, you want to say hi? Hello, and um, I'm actually uh, in Texas today too. And speaking of cold, it is snowing in Austin. It's ridiculous to me <laughs> coming from North Carolina, where it's actually warmer. Um, I'm also kind of looking forward to NX here. Um, I'm actually working with the Narwhal guys for OA on a project, and uh, we just we just uh, put in NX, and we've just split our first two apps from one another. So now we're, we're starting just just now, like this week, starting to leverage NX. So also pretty excited about uh, what Shorty's going to show us. That's awesome. So you might have some more advanced questions than the rest of us since you've been uh, since you've been in it. I'm like a whole weekend. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And we have Thomas. Thomas, I know you've been looking at NX lately, so you you probably have uh, some some things. You always have good things to add to the panel. Oh, you're sweet. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, everybody. I'm a huge fan of the Narwhal guys, so I'm I'm promised myself I would not do any heckling tonight like I did with Jeff the other session. So t today is just listening and going, ooh, and ah, when Justin does cool things. Um, I started playing with NX and f actually looked under the hood at how they were connecting it up with the CLI. And so I'm really interested in hearing more about that and even want to start diving under and doing some stuff with schematics. And um, so really cool. Um, I'm super excited. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeff wants to know why you're nicer to Shorty than you are to him. <laughs> because uh, uh, his beard's better. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> and he smiles more. Jeff always looks so stern. You can't. Jeff is always messing with me. I can't ever tell whether Jeff's in his head going, "That guy's an asshole," or if he's I going. I mean, that's a good point. Or, or if he's just going, I really like Thomas, but you can't quite tell with Jeff. With Justin, his emotions are more on his face, right? Justin is nicer than Jeff. I'll give you that. I think that's. The I best would, I say. would not say that. Jeff's pretty damn cool. Uh, just, yeah. um, he, he's he's easier for me. Je uh, Justin's easier for me to read, right? Yeah, yeah, I would go with you on that. Yeah. So, okay, so Jeff Cross Jeff is in the chat. So, huh? Go for no, no, go ahead. <laughs> well, Jeff's in the chat, so uh, so we all have to be nice to Jeff tonight. <laughs> but he's not here, so. All right, so Schwarty, Justin. I was calling you Schwarty, and, and Thomas said, who are you talking about? And I'm like, Justin Schwartzenberger. Uh, so are you, are you ready to rock and roll? You want to introduce yourself? I think everybody knows who Shorty is, in my world at least. But uh, you want to introduce yourself anyway? OK, I have to ask, do you prefer Shorty or Justin? OK, well, first off, I'm bad. It, it's a little weird having everybody talking about me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, okay, Let's talk right. about it, Justin in the third person, shall we? Yeah, right. right. <laughs> 
So um, Justin likes to go by Schwarty. Uh, <laughs> prefer he's an easygoing guy. Um, like everybody mentioned, I, I think that he likes to smile a lot. So uh, yeah, so yeah, <laughs> he could be like, "Do you smell what Schwarty's cooking?" Like The Rock talking to the third person. I don't know, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm Justin Schwarzenberger, um, also known as Schwarty. Um, I'm a product manager and educator at Narwhal on the Narwhal team on the part of the Narwhal pod. Uh, I also host Angular Air, a weekly podcast about all things Angular. And we're going to be checking out NX, something that Narwhal put out, um, an open source toolkit for enterprise Angular application development. Oh, so, yeah. That's me. Awesome. And, I, and everything else that everybody else said about me. Because <laughs> you're the nicest person. Like, I, I have gotten to know you more in the last year or so, and you're so cool, which it, it uh, doesn't surprise me at all that you work for Narwhal because they somehow seem to be scooping. Oh, and James Henry now, they uh, they hired him. So it's like all the cool people uh, get hired by Narwhal. Okay, so uh, I'm going to let you share your screen, and you can just rock and roll and show us oh, some my. cool stuff, and we'll heckle you. Thomas, I really hope you do heckle a little bit because it's kind of the reason why I bring you on this show is because you're a good heckler. It is encouraging. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm just going to start sharing my screen right away. I can do that. Yeah. Um, let's see. I've got a ultra wide monitor here, so this might be a little bit challenging. So I think what I'll do is I am going to share my terminal and we'll create a new NX workspace and then I'll switch to WebStorm. Hope that's all right with everybody. And then I'll just live in that's WebStorm and we, we can use the terminal and, and do all the stuff in there. So um, I guess this first, actually, uh, can you stop sharing for a minute? And we can just talk a little bit about NX really quick. And then I sure. will or share, and I could, I could show the site or whatever. Let's do that. Actually, share. Totally prepared here. Share, Listen, share me. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm making it on my mind. I'm, I'm make, I have a hard time making decisions. You should see me trying to go out to eat. I'm like, with my daughter or my wife, I'm like, where do you want to go? And they're like, where do you want to go? And I'm like, where do you want to go? I don't care. Let's just go. Forget it. We're going to stay home. So, all right. But I'm sharing. Here we go. All right. Uh, let's see. I will pick this guy here. We'll share that one. Okay. Uh, I will remove that so we can see this a little better. Okay. Everybody see that? We all good? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so NX, uh, like I said, open source toolkit for enterprise Angular applications. Uh, it's basically empowers the Angular CLI, kind of lives on top of it, takes it to kind of the next level. Uh, it's a set of schematics. It basically builds out a couple things it does, right? Uh, first thing it does is it sets up a workspace, uh, which is basically an Angular CLI project, but it's configured to be set up for multiple apps right away. Uh, little known fact, or maybe, maybe people know it, I don't know, but uh, the Angular CLI actually supports multiple apps in its own project setup. It just comes by default set up with one app, and the actual photo structure that you get when you ng new is a single app, right? And you're already drilled into the source directory of that app, and that's essentially how it's set up. And so what uh, NX does is it creates a directory structure. It creates a new Angular CLI project, but it reorganizes the directory structure so you have an apps directory and a libs directory, and then all of your other things like package JSON, Angular CLI JSON file, um, type your TS configs and everything at that level. So you're already ready to go to take advantage of the fact that the Angular CLI supports multiple applications. Um, and so we'll take a look at that here in a minute when I bring that up. But uh, so that's that's the main thing, and, and it's based on this concept of uh, approaching like the mono repo kind of development, right? And it's it's not necessarily full mono repo. It's more maybe kind of like a application domain mono repo, where you could think about it like if you have a client app, right, a, a, for for your customers, an admin app. Uh, some libs that are shared between those. Maybe you have a, a backend application and things like that. It's it's all those pieces that make up an application domain. I mean, you can certainly go further than that, uh, but it's it's probably like best to kind of think about it maybe like that to start with. Um, so it sets up the workspace, uh, gets you all set up for that scenario. And then it comes with a set of uh, schematics, 
And that and that's actually one schematic to set up the, the new workspace. But a set of schematics that uh, are used that are like the, uh, if you're familiar with the Angular CLI schematics, they have these generate commands, right? You can ng generate a new component, a new service. All those things are using the schematics engine underneath the hood. And you can actually extend the schematics engine and build upon it uh, and make your own schematics and, and run them through that. Now, right now, the schematics are set up to have just one collection. And so you, you can configure your Angular, you can actually configure your Angular CLI project to target a schematic collection. And out of the box, it comes targeted for the Angular uh, schematics. But what we do with Narwhal uh, or with the NX stuff is we have our own schematics and we configure the Angular CLI project to target that. And in our schematics, where we extend all of the uh, underlying Angular CLI ones, all the component, service, all those sort of things. So you still have those. And then you have all the NX ones on top of that. So it's this project setup, Angular CLI project setup and configuration for you. And then it's a set of schematics on top of that, things that do, um, like we have NGRX one that sets up all the, the files that you need for NGRX. Uh, we have downgrade and upgrade ones to get your an application configured to do Angular JS to Angular uh, upgrade module and downgrade module, which is the newer type of way to, to build kind of a like hybrid app. Uh, and then we also have a bunch of helper code, uh, another uh, package that comes along with it uh, at nrwl slash nx. And it has some data persistence class code that helps you uh, handle effects, NGRX effects for like uh, different race conditions and different patterns that you do, uh, optimistic updates, pessimistic updates, uh, querying data, fetching data, and fetching data on route navigation. So it has some helper code for that that you can use to, to easily kind of tackle those scenarios um, in a safe and, and proven pattern way. And then it also has some other helpers, like some test helpers, uh, to do some things for marble testing. Uh, so hot and cold observable marble testing helper functions and some things like that, and kind of tackle some of those things. So it's a set of, of all of these things that, that come with NX. But really at the heart of it, what it's doing is it's, it's enhancing an Angular CLI project, right? Talk about recently is uh, kind of explain it like, you could think about like what TypeScript is, right? Um, for people that like maybe think about, oh, well, I don't know, do I want to do this whole NX thing, but it sounds, you know, am I ready to take it on, whatnot, right? Well, with TypeScript, people used to do kind of like the same thing, right? Oh, I don't know about this whole TypeScript thing. But, well, it transpiles down to JavaScript. So at the end, you have JavaScript, right? And if you don't want the TypeScript part, you got all your JavaScript. And this is kind of like the same thing. You know, NX sets the Angular CLI project up for you. It provides the schematics. But what you have is an Angular CLI project. So from there, you, you just got your Angular CLI project. You can do your Angular CLI things if you need to do them in there. Uh, all the things you already understand about the Angular CLI, you can still leverage. Um, and it's just configured that for you. So um, that's kind of the concept. It's kind of what's going on there. Uh, we have at nrwl.io slash nx is some documentation for it, explains it, tells you how to get started. Uh, has some guides for doing some of those pieces and implementing some of those pieces. Um, and then we'll be updating that as we add more functionality and features to it and stuff like that. So I want to just dive in and kind of hack together some code and just kind of start showing some of all, all this stuff. But before we do that, does anybody have any questions, anything they want to talk about with this before we kind of jump into that? I was just going to point out, I was looking at that website earlier and that uh, I like that little video that you have there right at the top. And you have several videos on, or are you still creating more? Um, we're still creating more. We don't, I mean, I think we've done some talks. Some of our team have done some talks in, in places. I don't know if they're recorded yet. Uh, I did an interview the other day with Duncan Hunter and we talked about it. Um, and so we're, we're trying to get more content kind of out there for people right now. Um, but nothing other than, than what we have up here that I'm aware of right now. Um, I liked it. Yeah. I thought it was really helpful. Thanks. The voice on it's a little weird, but um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know who it is. But <laughs> I actually need a wait. That poor guy. <laughs> poor guy. Just quit sucking on nitrogen. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, 
I, I need to update some stuff. I, I have that on my list of to do here pretty soon uh, is to go through and update some of these guys and, and probably do some updates to that video too. There's a few things that have changed and maybe I'll give it some uh, glitter and glam and some, some bling on it too, maybe some graphics. I don't know. We'll see. So um, yeah. But, Actually, I agree with Bonnie. I found this video here at the start of this page very helpful. I ended up playing it three I know or four I... times, and it really gave me a sense of. It was actually the number one reason I started playing with it. Nice, nice. So Victor and Jeff were both like, "Okay, we need it. We need some kind of five minute teaser kind of video to get people, you know, to show them what it's about and stuff." And so, um, yeah. And, well, then I clicked on. Oh, I was just going to say, Bonnie and uh, Shorty, give just uh, give credit also. That curl feature that you're going to show in a bit is also really sweet. Yeah, yeah. So we've got this script to set it up, um, and that's what uh, Thomas is referring to. And we'll show that here in a minute. Uh, we have two. You, there's two ways to set it up, and we we have the script to set it up. And there's a byproduct of it that's pretty cool, uh, but it's trying to solve the problem of. of the current state of the Angular CLI is a little bit off from what we need it to be. So we're waiting for that to kind of sync up. And so in the meantime, it's, it's kind of difficult to do it just by the default way of what you would do with, with schematics. And I'll, I'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, so that's why we have this setup script to, to tackle solving that, to make it easy so everybody can get it set up in the, right, in the same way. Um, but a kind of a byproduct of this script is that it sets it up uh, without uh, and gets all like sets it up without you having to match your your global version of your Angular CLI. So it kind of does it all for you, and then cleans up, and then boom, it's done. So um, yeah. You know, I, awesome. I want to jump in for a second and and restress a point you made before, Chorty. Is um, the workspace is really incredibly helpful, and and you don't know you need it until you've got a bunch of different parts of your application or sub applications, and either you have them in different repos and you're trying to coordinate those, or you've got them all in your repo, but you don't have a very standardized way of bouldering them or or structuring them. Um, dropping them into an NX workspace works really well for cleaning up things in a consistent way before they turn into a raft nest in your code base. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's um, it's kind of the, the thought is that, OK, it's here to support multiple apps. Right. And then lives to go along with those apps. But I really personally feel that, like, even if I'm building one app, just a single app, the ability to have the apps, the app already in an apps folder in case I get another app down the road. Right. And the fact that I have a libs folder and it's really easy with some schematics that we have that I'll show to generate new libs, right? So you, you automatically get into this process of going, oh, cool, I'll just make new ng modules to group my code and I'll throw that in a new lib and I'll throw that in a new lib and I'll just compose them together in my app and I'll keep my app really simple and clean and just bring those in. And, and now I have a lot of that benefit and there's low friction for a developer to get into that pattern. And I think that that's the exciting part of it. The side effect of doing that, I think, is you mentally start then thinking about code reuse. Because when you can put your code and organize it very easily in libraries, then you start thinking about, OK, I have my application code and I have my library code. And the library code, I might want to reuse. I might want to share. I yep. think you should show us. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So I'm gonna stop sharing my browser, and I'm gonna switch over to uh, this other thing here. So here we go. Let's see. Stop that. We will share my terminal. Okay. Uh, is that big enough font? Do I need to increase this here a little bit. Let's see if I even know That's how good. to do that. Okay. Like that. All right. All right, so I'm going to go over to the site, and I'm going to grab the uh, script that Thomas was referring to. Let's see. And get started. Do, 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 do. This is all on the site. I'm going to copy this so we can do this curl command, so we can use this install script. And then I'm going to give a name. Uh, actually, let me make sure I'm in a directory I want to do this in. I haven't done that yet. So CD code. How about sandbox? And we'll do it in here, okay. and we will use this script. And we're going to name our workspace. So let's name it uh, ng 
Houston. Hey, hey, hey. How about that? And Houston Sweet. That's awesome. Here we go. All right. Okay, so this is going to um, pull down. What it's going to do is it's going to pull down a little um, package JSON file, that, and then it's going to run uh, NPM on that to install that. And then it's going to create a temporary directory, pull that down, run NPM install, and then delete that temporary directory for you. Uh, so this a, the, the project setup for creating a new workspace uses a schematic. So you need to use the Angular CLI NG to run a schematic. So this is going to pull all down all the bits, run the schematic for you, and then dump all those temporary files. And now you have the, the project set up. And so it's similar to doing if you if you install Angular CLI globally and then you uh, run ng new dash dash collection equals and then the name of your schematic collection, which you would have to have installed globally as well. But there's a little bit of bug in that, so that's why we kind of have this this setup script to go beginning. But basically, the, the Angular CLI when you do ng new, it's actually running a schematic that's in the Angular schematics for generating a new Angular CLI project. And we just have one that generates a new NX workspace in the same sort of fashion, just with the different directory structure and that sort of thing. Right. Okay, so we're going to CD over into that. I love how you guys have been so careful to stay close to what we're already. So it's like you don't have to learn another thing because it's so close to the CLI for what it does already that you're just like adding new commands. Yeah, I mean, the Angular CLI is awesome, right? All the stuff that it does, all the things that it. It handles for us. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention is that we also have some linting rules that we include in here to help. Uh, and we're going to be doing more of those things. Uh, things like, uh, and we'll show that here in a minute as well. Uh, remind me if I don't. But uh, we have this concept of you can do these public APIs with these libs that you create. So now you can create this you know, ng module, or you can create a TypeScript lib right, that just has some TypeScript code classes or whatever. But you're basically going to get this index.ts file that you do all the exports of whatever you have in your lib. So you get to be explicit about what you want to share across other libs or other apps, right? So if you make a ng module that has a service and a helper class, you can expose that service. You can export that service in part of the public API, and you can keep that helper class private. And then if somebody tries to import that within the project, they'll get a linting error that says, hey, you can't go that deep in it, similar to what you do in in uh, Angular, if you try to do something deep in the Angular uh, package, scope packages, it'll tell you that, oh, hey, you can't, that's, you know, it's private, you can't reach in there. Uh, it does that same sort of thing. As well as formatters, we have a, uh, I think we use Prettier with our formatter uh, that will auto format your code. Uh, so you can run that as well. And, and it sometimes runs as well as it cleans up your code as well. So it's part of what gets delivered with NX. But, okay, so uh, I should be in here. Yeah, so that's uh, open up WebStorm. And I need to stop sharing and share that. So we will do that. <laughs> you get to see my smiling face again. Do you see my smiling face? I don't know. Yes, we do. All right. <laughs> I was oh, just thinking that okay. when you switched back off your screen, I was like, see, he's always smiling. Get to my I'm smile. Sure he's got a nice smile. Mine is goofy. His oh. looks good. Oh. <laughs> You're your own worst critic. Actually, Thomas. when I'm around Schwarty, I don't want to smile because then it's like, oh damn it, I'm oh, not, it's not even gonna compare. Now you're making me feel that. <laughs> I'll, I'll put stuff in my teeth when we're together, so then that way your smile will trump my smile. <laughs> How about that? I double right. dog dare you. Such a nice. Idea. I don't. I don't know if I could do that. I'd be too self conscious about that. <laughs> <laughs> this may make this a little wider. How's that? Okay. All right. So we got I this. <clears throat> I hope is this too small? That's this is the one thing that's kind of a bummer about presenting with WebStorm is that there's not really a, a simple way yet. I mean, there probably is. I just haven't really dialed it in to. It looks like, great. Increase my yeah, font size across the board. Okay. It looks great. Okay, so uh, it's created this project structure, right? We got an apps directory, got a libs directory. It doesn't come. It doesn't create any initial app for you. So it's a little bit different than the Angular CLI ng space new command, right? Um, so you don't get anything out of that. So you get to make that choice here after you create your workspace. But if we dive into the Angular CLI JSON file, we can see you know the apps array is empty. Um, we have some 
extra information that we put in here, uh, one of our latest things I think is this, I think this is from that, is our migration. Uh, so we've added a functionality to, if you've installed NX and there's been a couple of versions since you've updated it, uh, and you do that update, we have a migration tool that will run through all of the incremental updates for you and hopefully align your project back up with the latest version of NX. So as we decide to make some you know, differences and changes, you, you have an easy way to kind of get up to speed if you want to upgrade NX, right? So uh, if we go down here, uh, down at the defaults, I want to show this real quick. There's the schematics property right, that we have on defaults, and this is Angular CLI. Uh, you can configure what collection of schematics the Angular CLI is going to use. So out of the box, it's going to use the Angular uh, schematics. But in our scenario, we're telling it to use our at NRWL slash schematics. And that's our custom schematics that we created. Uh, again, the Angular CLI right now only supports one collection. So you can only give it one. So if, if you want to create your own custom collection, certainly could do that. But if you want to still enable the default Angular CLI stuff, you would have to extend in your collection those uh, commands, right? And I could actually show that. Let me see if I can dig in. And I, I think this will have it in here. Let me see. I love schematics. I'm, I'm very excited about it. I've been waiting a long time for it. So um, I kind of geek out on it. So let me just uh, see if I can show it here. Let's see. Don't worry, you're among geeks. <laughs> I still remember when I first yeah, got my, uh, my NG book, and I was so excited when it came in the mail, the hard copy. And yeah, Samantha, yeah. at the time, she wasn't doing any Angular back then. And she was like, Mom, why are you getting so excited about a technical book? I was like, you just don't <laughs> She said, you're a nerd. Does, does she get excited now about them? Is she at that level yet? Now she does. She yeah, mainly yeah, yeah. she gets excited about animation. Yeah. They just need to, yeah. kids need to learn. They just need to learn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so I'm looking at this collection.json file, and that's just something that you need to set up if you want to build your own schematics, right? And so this is our narwhal schematic, right, for NX. And we've got all of our custom uh, schematics that you can call. Uh, app, lib, ngrx, upgrade module, downgrade module. And then we have all of the default Angular CLI ones that we've added in here. And we just extend from the at schematic slash Angular colon and whatever the name of that particular schematic is. So this is how we've been able to say, we want to keep all of the existing Angular CLI ones so that you could still use them in here. Uh, and then just add ours on top of that, right? So it's just a way that you can, when you build out your own custom schematic. So you could, if you wanted to go and uh, take an NX project and then add your own schematics, you could create your own schematics, configure it to point to that, grab all the stuff that's in here, you know, do an extends on all of our uh, NX ones, and you would have all that plus any of yours. So, um, and hopefully, I, I think they're working on a way uh, to be able to kind of merge collections or, or have some way to aggregate those to make that easier. I mean, because one of the challenges right now, right, is like if the Angular CLI adds something, we have to go in here and add this and release a new version of this, right, um, to keep up. And then if you made one of yours on top of ours and we made a change, you'd have to go and add this right now. And so hopefully there'll be a way to kind of merge them together to make that process easier, where I could just say, I want to um, extend the entire schematics Angular collection, not just these individual ones. And then whatever it has, I always get them, right? But uh, I think you should just go kidnap Mike and Hans and like tie them up and make them join Narwhal and then just, you know. Yeah, take I was going to give Mike a little pressure here today if he was here, but uh, he's not here. So, yeah, I was going to see if he could get that push through. <laughs> I think he's going to try and join us in a bit. He might pop in later. Cool. All right. If he comes on, everybody, everybody else just ask him that question. Say, oh, you know what would be really cool? Yeah, that would be really neat. <laughs> Merging yes. collections. Yeah, 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 merging collections. How soon are we going to get that? You know, everybody could just be like, I want to do that with my product. Oh, and I want to do that with mine too. So maybe yeah, we can put the peer pressure just on. Just start them. having everybody tweet them. There you go. There you go. Like synchronized tweeting, <laughs> hashtag and everything. Okay, so um, so the other thing, so the AOCI has been configured for us, right? Uh, we've got a, a few other things that have been configured. Uh, we've got We've moved every. We've just reorganized the files and stuff, so it's all kind of ready to go, right? For as you add more apps and things like that uh, to the the workspace, right? Um, I was 
thinking let's go in here and just let's why don't we just live on the edge here and uh i'm just going to change all of the so we got angular 5.1 out right so let's just go through here and uh uh upgrade all of our packages right now to 5.1 and then i think a new cli came out so why don't we just get crazy and try that it might break and then i'll roll it back but we'll see <laughs> all right so I'm going to go to the terminal. I'm just going to yarn this in. Hopefully, I got them all. I don't know, because this seems like something we would all do, right? Oh, we want to upgrade. Yeah. Let's, see, let's see the resiliency of, of NX and what it's done. We'll find out. Um, OK. All right. So. Um, why don't we just start adding some apps to this thing and, and check that out? So let's say we, we're building out NG Houston Suite needs a client app, right? You're going to show a list of all of your shows and all that stuff. And this is going to be like the public facing what whatever all the viewers and everybody that tunes in wants to go and see and get all the info, all the deets about NG Houston, right? So let's go NGG. The G is short for generate. Uh, again, this, these are all Angular CLI commands to run these schematics, right? NGG, generate. Uh, we're going to do app, which is one of our schematics. We're going to name it. Let's say name it client. Um, you want some routing in this? Should we have a put the router in this? Probably, right? So do uh, dash dash routing. And then I always love to do dry run, especially when I install changes on the fly and see if we're going to get what we expect to get, right? Aha, see, so we didn't. So uh, I might need to roll back the Angular CLI version here. Let's see. Uh, do do do. Cannot read property root of undefined. All right. Let me do that. I'm gonna change this back here. This, this is one of those things that like it, why we still have to have this the install script while we're setting this thing up. Right? Is like there's still some things that we're we're working with. Um, I think that latest word is that maybe like by Christmas, by the end of the year, uh, the CLI might have the bits that we need to kind of pull off what what we want. Um, so we shall see. But let me do this again here. All right. Ah. OK. So we take a look, and we see all the things that it created, right? So in the apps directory, it created a client folder based on our name. We named our app client, right? And then it sets up everything that you're used to with an Angular CLI project, a source directory with uh, assets, environments, favicon, all that good stuff, right? Basically, the same thing that you know, we generate ng new application or ng new, and then whatever your name of your Angular CLI project is, you're going to get these same kind of bits but with a little bit of NX stuff in there as well, right? So if we go into this, we can check this out. Uh, get this thing to refresh here. Oh, I did dry run. Why didn't you tell me that? I got to actually. We thought you knew. Oh, OK. Shorty, you did a dry run. <laughs> hey, thanks. <laughs> All right, this will help. Like, where's my, where's my app? OK, there we go. I know it's harder for you to be in the hot seat, but it's fun for the rest of us. It's no I'm pressure for us. It's hey, I'm I'm okay. <laughs> I, I feel I feel good. It's gonna work out, you know. I feel like it's gonna work out. So. Oh, you just changed it. I know. Well, no, I figured like I figured the 1.6 version of Angular CLI that already took care of it. So I've already done. Oh, it. you purged it. It's out of your system. Yeah. You're right. 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 It's not right. 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 It's not good. <laughs> okay. So we've got this uh, client direct app directory, right? And we've got all our similar stuff. Um, if we go in here into our app and our app module. We can see that we've got router module for root already configured for us, all set up. We've got NX module for root. That's our helper code and all the, um, the data persistence library and things like that. So uh, we have a, a module that contains all that. So that's already set up. Uh, we also have, let's see, in our app. So Shorty, one question for you. Yeah, yep. So go back to your module. Yep. That's one thing I didn't really understand. Even though I'm not explicitly using any of the NX code yet, um, I, I still this module was included. Can you explain what that module is providing for us a little bit more? I was just wondering yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, 
so this is going to provide uh, I believe this has our like our data persistence class uh, which which helps with the NGRX effects uh, those uh, I don't think it has the testing stuff the testing I think is in a separate well it might be in this one let me let's take a look oops too many <laughs> too many acronyms it's not NGRX it's NRWL there we go uh, Of course, I'm not gonna. Uh, let me see this here. Yeah, so it's got our data persistence class provides that. Um, so that's all that we have in here right now. So this is this data persistence class that helps with doing optimistic, pessimistic updates, fetches, and router navigation stuff for uh, FX within uh, NGRX. So that's what it's got right now. And then if we have any other stuff that's provided these helper classes and, and functions and things, they would be as in part of that, right, as we go forward. Does that answer that? That was a good question. Yes, thank you. Okay. And so right now, just as, yeah, it assumes that each app that you're gonna create is gonna wanna leverage that, so we have that as part of the schematic, right? Um, I think some of these things will be things that we, you know, over time, depending on, on how people use it and what people want, you know, maybe some of these things become an option flag when you create it, and you know, so you can maybe it's by default, and then you could turn off including that if you if you want to create apps that aren't going to have that piece, right? And I think that could probably be a case where uh, you might need it just in your um, you might want to only provide it and bring it in from a lib or something like that, you know, a, a lib that has your state. So, uh, but yeah, so right now it's just it's part of a new app, right? Okay, so then in the app component HTML, we've got our kind of little welcome NX kind of message here, right? And then we have a router outlet because we did dash dash routing. So it set up router outlet. If you did it without dash dash routing, you would get an app without the router outlet and without the router configured and that sort of thing. So you can go either way on that. Okay, uh, so let's say we, okay, we need an admin app, right? We're gonna have an admin app for uh, Bonnie uh, to manage all of the content and everything that's going on. So should we call that admin? Do you want to call it something different? Bonnie's admin? I like admin. admin. Okay. All right. And is that going to have routing? Let's do it with not routing. Let's say it's just like a, a one, I don't know. Let's just do this. Try run. Just in case. Don't forget. I do not want to have to. Try run. Okay. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, apps, admin, source, all that looks good. Okay, let's do it without the dry run. Boom, boom. Okay, now we've got our admin. Same sort of setup, same sort of deal. We didn't do routing, so I'm expecting this to not have the router module for root. Don't have that in there. We go to our app component. We don't have a router outlet. So, yep, two kind of options that we can do to set up these applications, right? And again, those same application type stuff that you get set up with Angular CLI. So if you're using that, you've been building apps with that, you're going to get the same feeling. You, I mean, everything's familiar, right? Um, and one other thing is that because it's on the Angular CLI, it uses all the uh, style guide stuff. Um, so all of the, you know, and, and all those schematics, right? The schematics are all based on that. So generate a component, it's going to create a directory for that, going to put the HTML your style file and your TS file and your spec file all together in there. So all the things that you're used to, you're still going to get, right? Um, it's, it's not making any changes to those things. OK, so um, we've got an admin app, we've got a client app. Let's add some libs. We can add a, uh, let's put this out here. Oh, what are we going to want to have? We probably want to have a, some common UI stuff between the two, right? Maybe we're going to have some buttons and some some form elements or things like that that we want to share. So that's pretty easy. We can just do ng generate lib. Let's call it mm, common UI dash UI. Um, and we're going to have some components in here, some uh, Angular stuff. So let's just leave it as is. Uh, we'll make it, and by default, it's going to create an ng module lib. So it's going to create that for us. Uh, we'll do the dry run, just to confirm. Okay, so we're going to see it's going to create it in the libs directory. It's going to be created based on what we named it, right? It's going to create a source directory. It's going to create the module file, a spec file for that. And it's also going to create this index.ts file. So let's run that, and we'll take a look at what that's got. 
Okay. We'll come over here. Common UI. We'll go into the source, check out the module. So now we've got an ng module created. It's going to bring in the common module. It's pretty common for us to bring in the common module when we make ng modules. So we figured majority of time you're going to do that. So let's just go ahead and have a schematic do that. Um, so it gives us an uh, ng module ready right within this lib called common UI module. Now we're ready to kind of bring that in. We could bring that into other apps. We could bring it into other libs. We can compose with that, that sort of thing, right? Then we also get this index.ts file that handles all of our exports of that lib, basically our public API. So we've got export common UI module. So now we can use it from other apps or, or other libs, right? And from here, we have to explicitly add anything that we want to export from this lib into this uh, index.ts file. And that allows us to control, like I was saying earlier, the code that we want to expose from our libs. And so we can have it a pretty clean way to say, well, we've got some, some of these services or, or components or, any, or directives or anything else that we want to have internal. We can just not expose it through the export in the index.ts. And then we're going to get linting messages and errors that lets us know as we work in this workspace uh, that that's not intended, right? To use that, that deep is not intended. And this is one of those benefits of having a um, uh, kind of this workspace and this mono repo type of thing going on here is that it's pretty easy to to have that sort of you know workspace aware. Our IDEs, our editors, our linting can have that visibility across the board there, right? Because it's all in the one spot. So, any quick questions about that before we add some stuff to this? No. Nope. Yeah. I, I'm even checking the uh, YouTube's questions. We got anything? Nothing? No, I'll let, let you know. know right? I'll, okay. I'll, um, I'll give you some feedback. Yes, please. One. Sure. So I meant to tell Victor about this. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that Angular Material does is they actually have in their packages a file called public underscore API dot TS. And okay. then their barrel exports what's in the public. And that seemed to me to be a little bit better, a little bit more intuitive. So I thought I might point that out to you guys, and you may have a discussion internally and see if you want to adopt a similar standard for the schematics. Yeah, is there is there then another file next to that that would go along with the public that like makes a reason for the public being one level down? Or is there Well, public is know? right is a is a peer to index to the barrel file. Okay. So instead so, of the index managing what is public or not, everything that is public is in the public API, and then the index just republishes it, re-exports it. So is it why? just one like one level deep? For, like why is it one level deeper? Did you know? It's not one level deeper. It's in the same level as the index. Well, we should probably take it offline. I didn't mean to okay. take you too too far. I'm off curious. Path, yeah. But um, I I think we should explore it more. Okay. Because it looked interesting, and I wanted to hear from you guys what you thought about that approach. Yeah, I'd like to see why why it is that the so you're saying the index file exports the public file. Is that correct? Correct. It exports the the stuff that's been exported from the public file. Yes. From the public. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'll take a look and see what what it is that they're doing with that pattern and if that was what what's solving. Yeah. Cool. OK, so, um, so we've got this common UI lib right, that we set up. So why don't we add a uh, component to it, add a button to it? How about that? So clear this out here. Let's do uh, ng generate c for component, um, shorthand for component. I guess I could do component for anybody who doesn't hasn't used this yet. And then uh, what do we want to call this? Let's call this. Um, Anybody got a name? You want me to just call it button? Let me call it anything Click. special. <laughs> Click me button. Yeah. Okay. Me button. And you haven't fired this up yet. How do you know this is going to work? You should do it. Ng serve here in a minute. Oh, uh, you sure. want me? Okay. Yeah. Well, sure. We can do that. You want me to do that before the button, or do you want me to do the button? No, do the button, and then and then. Uh, okay. I'm gonna fire. I'll it do the button. You gotta and make I'll bring sure it, it works. The apps, and then we'll check it out. All right. All right. Sure. Sure. I, I have confidence that it's going to start up, but. Um, <laughs> we should definitely do that, right? Uh, all right. So ng generate component. Click me button is going to be the name of our component. Uh, do we want to do any regular 
component options that we know, know of? You know, do we want to make this flat? Do we want to not have a spec? Do we want to, or we want to just create it as we normally create it quickly? Actually, try, try making it flat. I'd like to see that. Okay. Sure, no problem. Dash dash flat, I think it is. I haven't um, learned all of these flags yet, so this is cool. <laughs> this is kind of like a, a magic show. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> Let's do it. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think it's magic. All right. Um, and then, so does everybody know about the dash dash app one to target an app? Maybe not, because no. most people probably work with one app, right? But because we have that apps array and they use CLI, they have an option for dash dash app equals, and you can tell it what app to use, right? Um, and the shorthand for that is dash A. And so dash A equals, and then we can give it the name of the app that we want to put this thing in, right? So let's actually jump back to our Angular CLI JSON file and take a look since we've added some apps, okay? We've got... Um, three apps added. And we, we actually, so we, the NX adds libs as apps into this apps array because it allows us to do things like add components and things to different, using the app uh, option with the name and we can target a, an app or a lib to put these things in. So we kind of leverage that, right? Uh, maybe we can convince the CLI to change this from apps to, I don't know, something, right? And so it doesn't think like apps, but, uh, but yes, yeah, so that's how they get set up, right? So we create an, we do ng uh, generate app admin. That's why we got that client, and then we generated a lib called common UI. So we got that, right? So all of those with the the name property are in there, like the same way we named them. That means we can go to the terminal and do ng generate component, use the app flag, and set that equal to common dash UI, and we'll do a dry run just to confirm. Oh, you're gonna get sick of the dry run probably, but you know, hey, I like to just make sure it's it's safe live programming, right? <laughs> live coding. So, all right, so check it out. Libs, common UI, source, click me button. Uh, we did flat, so we didn't get a directory called click me button, right? Uh, so all the, the stuff that you're used to, what the ng generate component's gonna do, it just happened to put it in this directory for us, right? Um, oh, and it also did, what the Angular CLI schematic does for component, which is it finds the nearest module and adds it to that, right? So let's go ahead and do we want to keep it flat? Let's keep it flat. Okay. So let's go check it out. So we've got it in there, right? Um, and of course, if we go to our common UI module, we've got the declaration of the click me button component in there. So everything's set up as we're used to in creating the, again, same sort of stuff we've done with the CLI. We just now have it organized within a lib for us, right? Super easy to do, super quick to do. Uh, this thing maybe uh, we can add a service to it. You know, we could add pipes to it. We could do all, all that stuff, right, by just targeting with the dash A. So let's uh, go into here. Let's actually make this a button. Oops. Click me. How about that? What I need to add to the button to make it uh, all accessible and all that stuff. Thomas, you got any feedback for me on this? What should I should I just add button or should I really like should we should we do some like serious stuff here? Actually, just add button and then show us how we use right. it in the app. All right, all right, all right. We'll do that. Okay. That sounds really um, good. Okay. So you're just being really nice here, trying to make right? sure it's accessible. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's hard. You think about doing demos, but we should do this stuff the right way, right? So, so if you're gonna do this, do it the right way. But for now, we'll just do this quick, right? <laughs> let's make it. Right. All right, let's add a. Why don't we just add a style to it here, real quick? We'll do. Um, we'll just select it directly because we can do that with this uh, encapsulated CSS and feel semi decent about it. Do border red. One, oops. One pixel red. How about that? Solid. And let's go back. Gray. Sure. Color. What goes good with gray? White gonna be okay. White. White. Well, it depends on how how gray. All right. We'll find out. Okay. Black and gray. This is this is like my uh, graphic design days in college. <laughs> Everything was black right. and gray and red. 
All right, so let's, uh, why don't we use this thing in this uh, uh, client app. So we'll go over here to the app, we'll go into the app module. We want to import this, right? So let's import our uh, common UI module. And as you see here, okay, I've got WebStorm and auto completed the import statement for us. So we got some fancy stuff going on here with the import statement, right? We've got this uh, at ng Houston dash suite slash common UI going on there. Um, might not be too familiar with people, maybe familiar to some people, right? But this is kind of some of the wizardry that's going on. This is another thing that I really love about NX, right? Is like uh, we go to, and this is really like a, I believe this is like a TypeScript thing um, that you can leverage. But we're we're auto doing it for you. So, but you could hand do this as well. So let's check out the. I think it's the TS config, yeah. So in the TS config JSON file, right, uh, under the compiler options, we have this path. And when we set up the project, when NX sets up the project, it sets up the path uh, of the name of the project, the name of the workspace that we created, right, slash star, and then uh, maps that to lib slash star. So now you've got all of your libs, you can access them with this shorthand of at ng Houston dash suite slash, and then whatever the name of your lib is. So your import statements get a little cleaner. Okay. Yay. Good. Yeah, that's like that. that is off. <laughs> I love that. That's very cool. OK. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then you know what's doing is, like you mentioned, Thomas, with the barrel concept, is that that's going to then hit and, and kind of go through that index.ts file, right? So that allows us to have this. Uh... Ooh, OK, hold on. And that's going to allow us to have this uh, public API, right? That we can just only expose certain things. So, um, OK, cool. Uh, so we got that in there. We brought that in. We got that in as, as an ng module. So I believe that we could come in here and maybe use our button. Um, so one of the things that it does is let's talk about this really quick is uh, you know, it's setting up, I believe it's setting up all of these with, oh, it didn't, okay. So the libs don't, so in these apps, one of the things you get as a property in the Angular CLI is the prefix and prefix of app in here. And that's gonna be the prefix of all of your component uh, selectors that you create by default when you generate components, right? With using this generate schematic, it's gonna prefix them all with whatever you have configured here. Now, right now, NX, when it creates new applications, it doesn't change that prefix. And I think that's probably something that we might want to look at and do. Um, but basically, if you generate components in any of these apps, they're all going to start with app dash whatever for your prefix. So, But you can control that. Again, once, it, once NX created the stuff for you, it's all CLI from there on out, right, and schematics. So really, even though it is doing that right now, your, your um, project and, and tweak this and change it as need be until and X provides a way to maybe do that if it does, right? Um, and that's the same with all of this stuff, with the directory structure. I mean, all the what this sets up, you know, the, the root directory for the this app is this path here. And X configured that. But if you want to move that, you can come in here and change it. So you're not locked into anything, right? You would be locked into the way that NX does the generate for the new app and new lib, because it's going to put that path in there. Um, but other than that, like you can you can flex and move around or go wherever you need to to do with any of that stuff. Um, I just want to kind of make that point. So if we go back in here, let's look at the click me button component really quick. So a selector, so it actually made app click me button. I think the Angular CLI schematic for component defaults to app if you don't have a prefix in your app. So that's why we got app here is my guess. It'd be great to have Brocky on here to tell us that answer for sure, but maybe we could ask him that too. So let's go back in here, uh, app uh, click me button. Uh, okay, let's see. I think that I need to, it's been a minute since I've done this. I think I need to export it here from the module. Anybody want to, in order to use it outside of that module? I think I do, right? I believe you do need to export it. Um, why don't, you know what? It's like a shared module. You have to export it. Why don't we do this yeah. then? Why don't we create it? NGG. I'm gonna I'm gonna show another thing about um, component generation, right? NGG C for component. Um, uh, push me button. Uh, we'll do that flat too, and then we'll do dash dash export on it. 
believe this is export, right? Dash A equals common dash UI. Drive run. Good, run it. Back in here. Okay, so with the export flag, we can get that done for us, right? Um, so, yeah. So, if anybody doesn't know that when you generate a component, you can do dash dash export, and the module that it puts it in, it will also add it to the exports list for you. So, probably should have done that ahead of time. Flags. Yeah, they're pretty cool. So, let's just add this to the click me as well, click me button component. So, we've got those exported. So, now they're going to be usable by these other ng modules. Now we can go in here, app component, see if this is updated. There we go. We got our button in here. Um, oh, hey, that's, that's, uh, why don't we use it over here in this other app as well, in the admin. Um, and uh, let's do a little bit of this. We'll do a little h1 admin. Why don't we do don't click me? First, we still got the squiggly, so we got to go to our app module. We got to... Um, include that there, common UI module, boom, got that in there. Now, we've got multiple apps, right? So, I mean, I could ng serve from the command line and, and serve both of them, but the problem is going to be right now is that when you ng serve, uh, there's a default port that that runs it on, right, 4200? And we've got two apps, right? So if we ng serve uh, dash A, which is, you can use the app flag there, ng serve dash A, equals admin, and then try and ng serve dash A equals client, we're going to get a port collision problem, right? It's going to say port's already in use. So we could do the dash P or dash dash port equals and then give it the port that we want to use when we ng serve. Or um, what we like to do is just kind of come into the uh, package JSON file and create a, um, a uh, NPM script to do that. And we'll just go, go in here. We can kind of go in here and say, uh, admin, right? And then why don't we make this do an ng serve dash a for app equals admin. That's that name. Why don't we run that on port 4201? Okay. And let's add one for um, client ng serve dash a equals client dash P equals 4,200, okay? And now we should be able to come in here and just do an npm run admin. It's going to run that serve command. Let's open up another terminal, npm run client, run that. Now it's going to get a little tricky because I'm sharing my web storm. Now I have to share my browser. I can try and share this widescreen and we can see what it looks like. Um, my guess is going to be a, a little bit much. It's going to shrink the, this code for our viewers, but uh, let's take a look here. All right, I'm going to go. I'm going to stop sharing this. Oh, oh let me show one more cool thing, too. Uh, let me stop both of these. The other thing that we can do with uh, NPM scripts when we run those from here, uh, and I think I was just talking with Victor today, and, and Vigo's mentioned that they might be changing this here pretty soon, so take it with a grain of salt. But for right now, I could do uh, dash dash space and then dash O. In this case, dash O is a flag for uh, the ng serve command to open the browser right away. So you can ng serve and then dash O, and it'll open up a browser for you, right? Um, since I don't have it open right now, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, and the dash dash space on an NPM command will add those, will just pipe through those arguments to our thing. So we're basically just going to feed that through. So it's kind of a little way I, I like to run these things when I first kick them off. And you can see it came through there. And so it should run that there. I'll do the same thing over here. Uh, dash 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 O. Boom. Okay. And you don't see it because I got it in another browser, but I'm going to pull these over here, and I'm going to open these up over here. I'll share that. Hey, Justin, I think there should be a Narwhal blog post coming in about uh, you and your flags and all these little... Because well, there's so many little flags that are handy, and I don't... Well, yeah, but this a blog post, too, so that we don't have to go through the video and scrub through the video. This is a vlog. <laughs> this is the vlog post. <laughs> That trick with the dash show was worth coming to this particular session. Nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. That's that's my favorite thing about doing all this stuff and sharing all this content is like there's always something that I can throw out there that that somebody's gonna it's gonna be like worth the price of admission, right? And it's always those little things that oh cool, that's that's a nice little takeaway. So cool, I'm glad to hear that. All right, I'm gonna switch sharing to this thing. Hi again. How's it going? Hello. Let's and see. I think Thomas, we're gonna lose Thomas. I I yes. just invited Thomas. I pinged him today and was like, "Hey, Justin's gonna come on." So, uh, but I think he had some prior obligations. So I do need to run, but uh, Shorty, this is really really great stuff. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, and I'll and I'll watch the rest offline. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for coming. I'm All glad right. you're here. All right. Thanks yeah. for joining right. us, Thomas. Yeah. All right. Bye bye. See you guys. I, I get started talking and going and this stuff. I geek out on the stuff, and so. I don't, I keep going, sorry. It might, it might go long, so. No, it's okay. <laughs> if everybody needs to You're go, they can go. I'll, I'll just stay here by myself and keep talking, that's fine. <laughs> All right, so here. we've got our admin app, right? Running on 4201. Oh, look, we got our don't click me button, right? Uh, we got our client app running on 4200, and now we got our click me button, looks the same, right? So now we've got an into app shared, blah, 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 right? So, and it works, see, told you, I, I, I felt pretty confident that it was gonna start up and work, and it did. That's just, uh, let's confirm that it worked and make sure we don't have any console errors, because, I mean, that's probably like the real test, right? All right, this no console really errors exciting. there. No console errors there, okay, cool. You know. I don't ever again, feel like I have a legit app until I fire it up and click on it. Cool, cool. And again, this is, like, this stuff here is Angular CLI, right? So it's it's not like we've got any wizardry going on. It's it's just your your common stuff that you're used to with Angular CLI in terms of serving and running and, and all those sort of things. Yeah, I but, think those flags you count. You can't downplay it how it how well it uh, configs everything for you and, and tucks it away in nice common locations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. I love it. We actually had our previous work that I did. We worked with the angular cli from like really early on took it with the beta took it you know dealt with all the changes and everything saw that apps uh, array in there from the very beginning they just never activated it and we're like man we really want that we really want to do multiple apps in a single workspace you know da, 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 da. finally got a chance to like convince hans of a use case for it it's like okay we'll we'll turn it on and then i think it's just opened the door for all this possibility which is cool right um, because then you get all of that goodness of the CLI, all the linting, the building, the you know serving, all that stuff. Um, but now you can take it where you want. So now it, that was really like the key a while back was for the CLI to allow the actual apps array to start working. From there, I mean, you could do all you could do the same setup manually. You could come in here and and again, it's like uh, uh, you could set up the Angular CLI JSON file and create these individual apps and point their root directory to the structure that you have. And that's what I've done before in the past. But the cool thing with this is that you don't have to deal with that, right, with NX. And on top of it, you can quickly add the command, right? So and generate app, generate lib, and boom, you get it all set up and stuff. So it's, it's pretty cool. OK. Um, are there any questions coming in? Anything right now before I do anything else? Um, Sean was just clarifying in the chat. Uh, Sean's one of our regulars. He was saying that the uh, NX at this point is allowing the apps to exist next to each other in a single project, which is the whole mono repo concept. NX is configuring the Angular CI. It's, it's setting the Angular CI up to uh, have those all within the same project directory um, with the package JSON and the Angular CLI at the root of that so that it's aware of all those things. Uh, it's not necessarily uh, allowing it to do it. The Angular CLI allows it to do it because it supports multiple apps, right? Um, it's just configuring that for you to get that environment set up, so you don't have to manually do that. Does that make sense? And the dependencies are shared. The dependencies that are shared are would be in the libs. Like, wait, well, you have this mono repo. That means you have one node modules for the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one of the benefits here, right? Is that we've got one node modules for all of these apps, all of these libs, right? So now we're keeping all of our versioning the same. So uh, you have two libs in there, they have to run on the same version, right? Um, now there's a trade-off there, maybe you, there's some benefits that you have that you have different libs running with different versions. But I mean, if you think about it, like with, with we made two component libraries, right? And one component library was running on Angular version 5.0. And then the other component library got upgraded to Angular version 5.1. Uh, 
And what if there's something different in there and you try and bring those two together into an app, well, what is the app going to run? Is it going to run 5.1? Is it going to run 5.2? You know, you have that collision, you have that challenge. Um, or, you know, if you had an, an app, a lib that's running an older version of Angular and now all of a sudden it, it, you can't bring it in, right? You have these challenges. And so that's one of the things that it helps to solve is, is a single source of your dependency so that everything has to stay up to date on that current version of whatever it is, right? Um, so it helps with some of those, those challenges. Hey, Justin, I, I've got one question in this area. Um, I, so with having the multiple apps um, sitting side by side, are they also independently deployable? Could you could you build just one app and deploy that, and therefore it maybe takes only the dependencies that it needs, um, and other apps would be um, just uh, bringing in their own dependencies as well? Good question. Yes. Um, Yes, this is a very good question. So you can build them individually. So if we check this out here, ng uh, build command, we can do dash a on that, dash a equals admin. Uh, we can do dash dash prod, we can do dash dash aot, you know, all of the, the build commands that we're used to with ng. And it's just a matter of using the a or the, the app flag to tell it which one we want it to build, right? And then if we look in here for our apps array, for each individual application, we have the outdoor of where that build is going to go. So we've got disk slash app slash admin for the admin app. We've got uh, disk slash app slash client for the client app. So now they're they're being packaged up and built and put into those different disk directories, right? So now we can just do dash dash prod, dash dash AOT, the admin app, get that built. And now you've got your deployable chunk. And then from there, it's just however you go about deploying an application. You just would target that particular disk directory that's got all of your, your final built code that you want to go deploy. Make sense? Yeah. Hey, Justin, do you know about Lerna? I know a little bit about Lerna. I haven't really looked at it or played with it, um, but I, I'm familiar with with the talk about it or, or just kind of like the, the very basic idea of it. They want to know in the chat if you have an existing Lerna managed mono repo, can you still use this NX? So um, I don't know the answer to that, but the there I think there's one little piece that I, I do know is that you have this ability to, I think with Lerna or maybe it's encouraged or, or maybe people do it, I don't know, but to like have multiple nested directories within your libs directory, right? If you had like multiple libs, you, you may want to organize stuff. Like you may want to have all the common UI and things as your uh, design. You may want to have lib slash design and then all of your libs that relate to design, common UI, reusable components, I don't know, things like that, right? And right now with NX, when you generate new libs, there's no pathing that you can create beyond just the libs directory. So they all get created at the top level of libs directory. Now, we have an issue open and I haven't looked recently. I, we may have made the decision to start adding a flag in there for like dash dash directory, where you could then specify if you want to go and organize those deeper than than the libs directory. Um, but I think that's something that maybe people do with Lerna. Uh, you know, you don't really do now. That's the only thing I could really talk about that. I don't know. I I think Lerna does the whole publishing the building type of stuff for you for in terms of packaging it up for um, like NPM packages? I'm not sure. Does anybody else know? I don't know. But I know uh, for Porowit in the chat, if you ask us questions that we don't know, you have to talk next week. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the hook. <laughs> you got to do the, the next hook. presentation. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> so I'm just kidding. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, it's certainly easy to kind of try it out. Uh, well, Relatively easy, I guess. It depends on what you got, right? I mean, if you got I mean, I think if you're, if you're currently really using a, yeah, if you're using a mono repo, I think I would definitely be interested in in checking out NX. Yeah, it's it's you know again, it's really just that that ability to say, look, I'm going to have multiple apps in my Angular CLI project, and oh by the way, I'm also going to have an organization within this libs directory to to chunk it out and make pieces of it, right? For sure. Okay. Is there anything else in the we should stop interrupting? In the yeah, we we should stop interrupting you because we want to. I want you to get into the schematic stuff. It's like 
show us more cool stuff. And I know you have more cool stuff to show us, but we could like keep stopping you okay. and asking you questions on like. Okay, but you know that we just showed a bunch of schematics, right? I mean, the apps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The lib was a schematic, right? So it, we're just doing all schematics right now. So um, yeah, I feel like we just. It's like when I learned uh, RxJS, and and then I learned like I, I learned RxJS, and I started doing all this cool stuff, but I didn't really know the operators. And that's kind of how I'm feeling watching you with the CLI. Like I've been using the CLI for a while, but I haven't been taking advantage of all those flags and I'm just kind of in awe right now. Like you're so cool. I want to be just like you when I grow up because I want to learn all those flags now. It's nothing special. I'm nothing special. I just, I just have them, right? I've just been using them. So, <laughs> uh, okay. So dash dash AOT. I'm just going to build this other client one as well. Um, Boom, and we can kind of see that once we wait for it to build. Tick tock, tick tock. It's actually pretty fast, but that's because we don't really have anything in there. <laughs> so it's fun. Yeah. We're really proud of that button. Yeah, right, right. Deploy to production. It's ready. <laughs> you can't even do anything when you click on it. But hey, we'll see. All right. So you see, we got our disk directory over here with apps, and we've got our admin and our client, and we got all the little bits that we've got if we ng build, right? Um, and again, that's just configured up here. The uh, NX schematic for app automatically sets that up for you with that outer. But you can certainly, at this point, with the app set up, if you wanted to change that, you could you could come in here and change this outer and have it go somewhere else. Whatever you need to do from here on out, right? Once the app's created, then it's all kind of set. Um, Yep. So hopefully that answers the build question. Then anything for the deploy, right? It, it's just, it, it doesn't do anything for that, right? It, that's all just same way any of the CLI project deploy would be up to you. You just, it, you know, that's another decision to make, right? NX is not tackling any of that right now. I say right now, I, I don't know if we are or not. So <laughs> maybe I shouldn't say right now. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not tackling any of that. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Cool. OK. Uh, what else? Let's see. Don't forget you were going to show us some uh, some linting stuff with the public APIs. And if you try to like go too deep yes. in your imports. OK. Yeah, let's do that. So let's go in here and uh, clear this. Let's add a uh, service, NGG service, S for service, shorthand. I like all these shorthands. I should probably type these out, service. So people can kind of learn these if they, they haven't seen them before. Ng generate service. Uh, we will call it um, format message formatter. How about that? Message yeah. formatter. You know, one of the things you can do with the Angular CLI schematics is, as you notice, I've I've done a dash before, but I can also do a camel case here. It has little helpers under the hood that'll affect your clash. You know, so if I did message formatter here as the um, as the schematic as the name, you know, that I'm going to use for my service, it should format that into like a Pascal case for the, the class name and, and take care of it for me. Uh, Can you show us with the dry run, like either way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah check this out because uh, it's so the same, right? Service dash a yep equals. Uh, we're going to do this common UI, right? UI, okay. Dash dash drive dash run. Now I'm kind of curious if you did a dry run with what what would happen if you select the app but you typo it? <laughs> That's what happens. Unable to find app with name or index, right? So they got some nice little error message on there. Um, Okay, so the dry run shows you that the name of the service file is going to be message dash formatter, right? But if we were to look in that service class, you would see it named uh, as Pascal case message formatter service. Uh, so the dry run doesn't really show that one well, but it'll show this one well, which is if we do message formatter Pascal case and run that, we'll see it's going to create the file with the dash name in it. The, the pattern that we expect from the Angular.io um, style guy, right? Which the Angular CLI implements for its schematics. So let's go ahead and run this. Um, and you actually okay. get access, like when, if and when you want to write schematics, you get access to those formatters, right? So that you can do whatever you want. Yeah, 
yeah, so you can use all those, right? And then we use all those same sort of deal, right? So there's like a, they have like a classify one and a dashify one. And so the classify one makes it a Pascal case for the class name. Dashify adds the dash. So they have all these helpers in there, yeah. So if you build your own schematics, you can use all that same helper stuff okay. right now. Yeah. Yeah, the easiest thing is to look at the schematics for a component and service if you build your own and then just, you know, grab the tokens and grab the things from there and, and uh, do the same kind of stuff. Okay. Or build your own if you have your own uh, naming conventions and methodology, you can totally do that as well. And you can swap out the component. I get excited about schematics, sorry. Uh, you could, you know, you could build your own component <laughs> one. So instead of using the default component one, you could use yours. That creates them in your own way, right? For your company or your or your business or your personal desires, that sort of thing. So that's pretty cool. Um, okay. Yeah, that's another so, yeah. for me, that's another one of those great consistency things is as you have a corporate standard, if it if it varies different, if it varies from the style guide, well, you can drop your components in over or your schematics in over the top and then you can, the, the junior devs don't have to learn your format. They just get it naturally, which is awesome. Yeah. And then, of course, then you can you can uh, combine that with going into the TSLint file and adjusting the rules to match your rules, as well as all the, um, uh, we've got some other stuff down here. You can see we actually add, NX actually adds some stuff in here to the linting rules. That's that linting stuff we talked about for enforcing some, the module boundaries to make sure that you're not going deep on those sort of things. Um, so we've got some in there. Uh, as well as Codalizer, I think Codalizer is mixed into here as well. Uh, Minko's stuff that he's worked on, which is awesome. And so that kind of helps with these, uh, I think some of the style guide stuff. So you could come in here. So for your organization, you could come in here and tweak these and then also adjust your schematics and be rocking and rolling with what you want for your standards and your practices and for your team, right? Um, and then, of course, get all that linting. And so, so you get the schematics that you're talking about, that the code gets generated in the way that you want to do for your team. And then you can adjust these linters so that the team gets notified in their editors that they're implementing it or, or typing it in the wrong fashion for what you're trying to target for your company or your procedures. And that's all CLI stuff, right, which is the awesomeness of the CLI. So we're excited about that. OK, so, so we've got this. Oh, all right. Go ahead. Question. Can I can yeah. ask? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, about schematics, uh, you said that you, we can extend uh, and add additional logic, like to create stuff. But mm -hmm. can we actually like modify the existing one that uh, you guys created? Because I really love the structure, but um, in certain uh, the certain parts of the generation, I think that uh, I'm not okay with them. So can I just yeah. uh, somehow modify? certain parts of it or, I mean, without going to not modules, of course. Yeah, so, um, you know, you would have to do, you'd have to build your own collection and do the extent, well, you'd have to, let's see, what would you have to do? You, you might actually be able to just bring in the uh, Narwhal schematics library or the package, right? So that mm -hmm. your schematic package has that package in it so you have access to that. And then depending on, I, I don't know, but I think that there's a way uh, to when you run your schematics, to you know, you, you're running through all of the the tree. You're running through this tree of kind of like a file system sort of deal, right? Uh, so I think you could run that schematic, like run our schematic, and then run your logic on the output of that schematic before the final output gets out. This is kind mm -hmm. of like the idea of what schematics is doing: is it's taking this file tree concept and you're just sending commands through it, and you're you're slowly adding and changing that. So like. Um, you could probably leverage that where you could say in code, run our schematic, run the NX schematic for NGRX, and then you would get all of the file tree stuff that it would do, and then you could just reach into there and make changes to that before it goes on to its final route. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah, yeah I, I think that that's something that you could do, right? Um, yeah, it'd that's... probably be, yeah, it'd probably be easier than say, I mean, because you could certainly go into our the schematic for NX and just copy those files and then do the same thing, just make your tweaks, right, and have your own version of that. But uh, yeah, it might be easier to just run that schematic and then just make the few tweaks that you need to do mm -hmm. before the final output to the file okay. system. OK, that's yeah. cool. cool. OK, so I created the service. What did I name that service? Did I name that service? Did it get in here? What did I name it? I forget. 
message formatter. Is it in here somewhere? Where did I add it? Oh, I dry run it, right? Did you dry run? Oh, darn it. I didn't no, get it before I, you did. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I said an NGG service, a libs common UI source message formatter. Did my UI not just update? Maybe you just need to refresh it. Tell you what's going on here. Let's see. Yeah, I guess so. There it is. Okay. There it is. All right, so I got this message formatter. Let's just add a method format uh, value string string um, turn. I don't know. We'll just get fancy. We'll uh, do string. Oops, value. Let's pluralize it. <laughs> Add an S on there, right? OK. Uh, and then let's go into our uh, click me button component. Let's go to our template. Let's add a, a click event to it. But, um, about that. Let's implement that. Let's go console log. Is everybody console logs, right? Is it just me? Uh, no, it's not just you. OK. That, uh, let, let's do this. Let's bring in our made a class out of that, right? So private uh, message formatter. Message formatter service service. Let's uh, call this message formatter service, and let's go. Um, meeting. Rob. Rob. Say Rob. meeting with Rob. Oh, Rob. Yeah. Meeting with Rob. Okay. Meeting with the Rob. Can I get Rob's the bacon emoji? Can I get the bacon emoji in here? Yeah. Let's yeah. All right, let's go. You can't see what I'm doing here because I'm on another browser. But let's see if I does Twitter have the bacon emoji? Yeah. Uh, just do yeah, command control space. Command control space. Right? All right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Know. Okay. Command control space. Ooh. See now you taught me something. That's awesome. This is my takeaway right here. Okay. So I, how do I, I learned that on Angular Air. I think uh, Alyssa taught me that. Oh. I was so excited when we learned that. Uh, I was, yeah, I anybody was probably, who has a Mac. I was probably busy looking at the time or something when, when she showed that. <laughs> I should know Keep that. the guests going. Keep the guests going. Yeah, right, 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 right. Bacon, uh-huh. Cool. OK. Nice. Uh, so for anybody who hasn't seen that, command control space on a Mac will give you emojis anywhere in any program, whether you want them or not. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. we, actually, what we should have done you was we should Rob, have put the bacon in the message formatter. OK, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's just do that. Every meeting uh, with Rob should have bacon. Have <laughs> and let's go to that. Plus bacon, of course. Right? OK. I love it. There we go. <laughs> this is my favorite formatter ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. OK, so now uh, we've got that in there. We've got our click me button, right, is going to call that, right, when we click it. Uh, we still have both of these running. Yes, yes, right? OK, good. Um, you have an error on the import. I do? OK, where is this at? Here. Oh, I do. OK, so sometimes, no, I did. OK, cool. Um, no, not cool. This We are in the same lib. So I think that there's, uh, I don't know if this is a, I haven't looked at this and see if this is like a WebStorm thing, resolving this import or not, or um, if it's like a, a TypeScript thing and, and all editors are going to do it. So we'll have to take a look at that. But this message formatter service is in our lib that we created. So really what I want to do is I want to path to it relative within our lib, because that's what we're in. So I really want that. Um, I don't want to be reaching through that shortcut, through that public API path into it. Um, 
because I'm not able to, right? Because I'm because I haven't exposed this message formatter service out through that public API. So this path right here is really trying to deep link through that public API, right? Which is why we get a complaint with the um, TS lint, which we have for that NX enforce module boundaries that we've added to the TS lint stuff that NX adds to it, right? That says, oh, you, you're trying to deep import something that's not part of the public API, which is cool. But it's kind of a bummer right here that it auto import decided to pick that path. Um, so I don't know, we'll just have to look at that and see if that's something that we can control with NX or not, but uh, I can certainly just go up here and change that. Thanks for pointing that out. Um, okay, so we got that in there, got that all there. So let's say we wanna go to the client and we're like, oh, we love the bacon formatter, we wanna use that, right? And we go to our app component and uh, we want to create a uh, bacon, uh, I think you should publish this bacon formatter on NPM, Justin. It's, I think it's yeah, the next it's, big thing. It's the next, you think so? <laughs> All you, right. got my, uh, you got my star. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one star. That's a start. Service, right? Message. Tire dealers everywhere yeah, will be service. downloading it. Okay, so we see when I go to do that, you know, here's where we, where we like to see that import statement being this deep link because now we say, okay, well, I'll try to do that, but I'm not allowed to get to that, right? I say, oh, well, cool. It's just in the common UI. That's just short that, right? Oh, well, no, it's not because it's not exported, right? So we didn't make that public. So we've got this linting and stuff that's happening that's telling us, oh, you know, you're, you're using it wrong. Um, so that's the benefit of, of having these libs, right? And, and structuring our co code in these libs and, and packaging them up or, or or placing them in, in that lib structure is that now we can control things like this. We can say we don't want the bacon service out there um, because it's proprietary. I don't know right if you exported it goes out into the, right? I didn't, and that's why. That's why we're blocked, right? Because the message formatter yeah. service was never intended to be used outside of that module. It was just intended to be something special that happens when the common UI button decides to click, right? So we've, we've blocked that out. So we can control the intent, intended usage of our pieces of our code through uh, that. But you can export it, right? Because I, I think the bacon sure. service should be shared with the world. All so right. all well, you have to do is, is go in there and export that in the common UI, and then it'll be in the public. Sure, so so this is NG Houston's application. So we, we need, a, you're the, the stakeholder, right? So you're making the decision. So sure, I'm going to build it however <laughs> you <stay>. like it. <laughs> so, so I'm going to go in here. If Sam gonna... watches this, she's going to have a fit because uh, we're vegetarians and we're talking about bacon and steak. That's it. Uh, it's a uh, veggie I'm just bacon. mostly a vegetarian. It's, it's veggie bacon. Like... It's veggie bacon. It's, it's soy bacon. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Can we edit that, edit that out? There's no such thing. I don't know if it's going to be more upset, Rob, if there's no bacon or Sam if there is bacon. That's okay. Sam doesn't usually watch this, so. We can have all uh, the bacon. She's not, not going to watch my episode. I'm bummed. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give her a hard time about that. Okay. Message formatter service. Now we're going to export that right in our index.ts for our common UI uh, lib that we created. So now if we go back over here and we resolve this, we get the path, right? Because it's part of our public API. So now your wish is granted. We have this uh, exported and available. Um, we provide it as well, I think. So let's see. Do we provide it? Yes, we do have to provide it as well. So we got to go into uh, our common UI module. We'll have to provide it, right? Well, we can provide. Well, I mean, since we're exporting it, we're making it available. We could actually come up here and decide to provide here if we wanted to. All right? Providers mm -hmm. message. Service, service, we do that. Does anybody uh, who's still left here, uh, do you ever provide anything at the component level? Have you had a use case for that? Um, I don't think Just so. services. Well, when I first started, I did. Now I don't necessarily, because I, I, I don't know. Is this still a thing? Yeah, it's still a thing, right? Yeah, Did I ever do I've that? Have a use case that. for that yet? Whenever you need it. Whenever you need a new instance of the service, anytime the component is created, then you usually do it here. But most of the cases, you don't really need you it. You don't, right, right. 
But you can do it. Man, I'm gonna have to start so having you on more panels, Ilya. You just sit there, and Sorry? then as soon as we make a mistake, you just like quietly stealth mode, like, hey. Totally throw some stuff in there. Perfect. You should, yeah, you just stay yeah. on a hangout with me, and whenever I code, and then tell me what I'm doing wrong. It, it's like the live coding assistant. It's like, okay, yeah, before I you learn that, do this. I can right? so I, don't. <laughs> I, I can all, uh, I can say as well that uh, you have double quotes on line six instead of single quotes. From the import. Yeah. I wonder what did that. I don't know if that's. It's automatic. That storm that did that? Uh, you have one other I... file somewhere as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I wonder if I, I wonder if I have WebStorm configured to do that, or it, it must be. Yeah. It's I don't think it's got to be from that, right? I, I just don't have yeah. it configured. You know what I did is, is for our workshop. So I usually run um, WebStorm. I use the Material plugin. There's a material plugin that looks makes it look like the material kind of design stuff. So it gives it a dark theme and it changes the entire thing. So I like it. But uh, for our presentation for workshop I did the other day, I needed to switch to light mode. So and I had to do it kind of on the fly. So I'm like, forget it. I'll just uninstall that thing, right? And so when I installed that, I I may have also changed back to some default in settings, you know, and I think I probably did that. So I think that's the other reason why I've got no space here on my imports coming in, yeah. um, is it's that. Uh, the, the linter is not complaining as well. Which is, yeah, I wonder why the linter is not complaining, because normally it, it would, right? It would complain, yeah. that, oh, you got double quotes, fix that sort of thing. So, um, but yes, I, I, would, I would like those to be that way too. <laughs> so I need to change my environment um, and set that up, so. OK, uh, what do we got here? So we brought this in. We, we, we decided to make that public, so now it's available anywhere, right? So now we've got our uh, this particular client could use it. And it could get crazy. And it could go, uh, let's see, what do we do? Where do we got bacon? Bacon string, ng on init, bake this, bacon, this, uh, message format or service format. Um, Called bacon. About that. Okay. Uh, and then let's use it in there because we're just going all the way with it. So we might as well. Bacon. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, Rob is happy. Crazy, crazy tangent, yeah. but we'll have it. Okay. So Bad one of our servers is still there. <laughs> is done. Okay. All right. I'm going to switch this thing. Do, do, do. Hi again. Uh, back to the browsers. What browsers we got? I knew we were going to have fun tonight. Uh, we got some Twitter up here. Okay. So we got, oh, we got an error over here. That's interesting. Dun, dun, dun. We'll take a look at that in here. Oh, message form. OK, so we've got uh, click me, all the plus bacon, of course. If we click me, we got bacon going crazy in the console. So we got that. I was really trying to show that that, that message service was going to be private. Be like a, Sorry, a I missed you. Got, okay. got an we issue that, here with the. Then we added bacon. <laughs> right? So I, I'm curious why well, we got this uh, no provider for message formatter service and the admin. Um, oh, I know why it is. Um, let's go back. I think to we have to provide it in the uh, in the admin in the admin. Yeah, module. we recorded it, but we still have to provide it. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. So let's go back there, uh, share that. You just have you're just gonna have to see my face every once in a while. Sorry. Uh, we like your go. face. It's okay. Okay. All right. Thomas likes my smile, but he's already gone. Yeah. All right, common UI like module. What was that? What? We have <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Providers. Uh, I should have called it bacon message service, but because now I try to I try to type it out. I don't want to type bacon. I just want to type bacon all over the place. What do we call it? <laughs> message format. Well, that's so, why we always have to refactor. It's job security, you know. Right. And again, but so I like see, the fact we, that we started this and it was going to be private, and then we changed the whole. You know, we changed our minds. I mean, that's kind of the nature of development: is everything changes as we're working. And it's cool that this NX and the CLI is so customizable. Like you, you basically can set it up and configure it exactly the way you want, and then change it, and it just keeps up with you. It's really nice. 
Right, right. Just to mention that if you're going to provide it here, uh, probably it's better if you do the for root thing, because if you're importing the common UI module somewhere in a yeah. sub module, yeah, it's going to be bad. So what are you referring to here is we do a static. Yeah, static for root, and then you just uh, yeah. provide the module with the providers. Providers, just just saying. Yep. No, let's let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do return. Really, you're pretty good at this stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I do all day. <laughs> I think you're and Ilya, you're going to come on and do a presentation for us too in a couple weeks, aren't you? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to have to after this. Right. So, right. What should I present? Why we do this. Angular, why we uh, do writing this. Angular. <laughs> I should. Uh, I want to find a nice topic, and I'll definitely do it. All right. Okay, well, we still have people in the chat, so tell uh, tell Ilya in the chat what you want to learn about, and he'll come and. <laughs> okay, but, but other Rob, than bacon, I mean. Rob, you asked why you want to do this, right? Yeah. So, do you, Ilya, do you want to uh, do you want to explain that? No, it, well, the place is all yours. Oh, well, great. OK, so just have me do it, and I'll explain it. OK, all right. Um, uh, yeah, so so we're doing this for root, right, to provide these providers. Why don't you explain it? I'm doing all the talking. Okay. <laughs> well, you brought it up. Uh, we want, we want the, the, to provide our services in the uh, topmost module, because otherwise, if we import this uh, common module in a sub-module, we'll have multiple providers which are on the top level and on the bottom level. So we won't be working with the same instances. It's going to create new so instances this, each place, right? This kind of gets around that, um, the singleton. So, so what's happening is if you're providing in a multiple places, you're not getting a singleton. You're getting individual instances instantiated. And this makes it so that there's only a singleton. Yeah. Uh, yeah. OK, so we're, so that makes sense then. That was pretty awesome. I learned something new. Yeah, that's one of the things that um, I think that is important for, for everybody to learn in terms of when you, know, when you provide services, right, and these things, these injectables, at what level do you provide them, and then what actually is going on under the hood and, and when you provide them, right? Um, it masks itself a little bit if you don't have state within your services, right? But the minute you have state within your services, then it becomes a problem and becomes a challenge. Uh, so, or when you start having modules that import other modules, and then you actually use that module in two places, and and you, like let's say you provide a, a, a store module, like NGRX store module, uh, like a um, feature module inside of one of your modules, and then you include your module in two side-by-side -side modules. And now you've got two. Each time the module starts up, it gives a new, fresh startup of the init of that NGRX feature, and it's confusing. So um, yeah, you kind of got to understand it, those things when you go on. It actually is. I have not seen this, and I know Sean is in the chat too, and he was kind of thrown for a loop by that. Can you just go back and just explain that all? Well, like back up like five minutes and explain that again. Well, you just typed in the for root. Where where did you put that in the uh, app module? In the common yeah. module? Yeah. So Can it's, you it's, just, it's, just say it again slowly? <laughs> and you too, Ilya. What should I say? Why, why we just do it? Just exactly again? what you said. Say it again. So basically, we're doing this so we can uh, provide our services only on in the root module, which is the app module, for example. Because if we, for example, import this module in a sub-module, then we'll have uh, we'll provide the same services again. And if a component in this sub-module uh, sub module uses those services, uh, we won't have the same instances, the ones that are in the upper modules. And we always so the want reason, the same instance, right? I mean, not always, but most of the time. The reason this got a little confusing was because Justin created the message formatter service inside of a common UI module, and then exported that common UI module and imported that as a dependency over in the in the component, in the ad, was it the admin module? 
and then yeah. imported the service with like kind of he he was kind of importing the message formatter service outside of the common module and providing it and that's where it kind of got a little bit confusing so we wanted to do this to keep it clean because the message formatter service was part of the common ui module so we didn't want to kind of go around it did i say that right yeah <laughs> okay. i think the ex extra piece is that the dependency injection is is what's going it's going to instantiate it based on where you provide it so you move the provide to a single location as opposed to providing it in two peer locations. So you've created a method on that common UI module so that there is a single point, and I guess through convention, we call it for root, so that you know that that only gets included in your app module or in the topmost module. Yeah, exactly. Yep. I think we got it. And Sean said, so if a lazy loaded module has a service, it would get a different copy of that service. That's what we're trying to avoid. I think no, we got it. Well, any module that yeah. if we don't use for root, uh, any module that we uh, import our uh, common module will get, uh, uh, the injector will receive uh, the new uh, providers. And whenever a component from this module requests uh, the service, it will create a new instance instead of reusing the one that we have already created. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. I'm glad I only had one glass of wine. <laughs> maybe, okay. Maybe this is a topic that I can talk about, dependency injection. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Great. I already did a couple of talks about it. So. <laughs> All right, cool. That's well, awesome. uh, so yeah, so I, I guess do, does that drive home the point though of this public API and stuff like that? You know, um, we we made everything, made that service public, but we could, uh, which is now kind of actually, yeah, yeah. It, I Did think we, it would really we break the demo. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> the idea was that it was just available to that one module, right? Because it was it was private and. And so you could control that, right? But as long as everybody got that idea, then we're good. Otherwise, I could. Well, it was private. it was going to be private, and then you put bacon in there, yeah. and then it just got out of hand, and we had <laughs> to share it. With you. But that's I mean that's how it works a lot when when uh, I mean I did that a, quite a bit when I was over at Conoco that I would make something, and I just was writing this code for myself, and then another department wanted to you know that, that's kind of the thing with enterprise like you make something cool and everybody wants a piece of it and you have to export it. Right. Which is why it's right. nice to have all this stuff set up in a mono repo because you you kind of you write something for one specific purpose and then you end up using it elsewhere, which is kind of the name of the yep. game. Happens all the time. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so uh, let me check and see if anyone else in the chat. Well, I guess I I could just ask them if you guys have any more questions in the chat. Uh, I was gonna I was gonna pull a Justin and say we're getting close to the top of the hour, but the top of the hour has come and gone. We we don't pay attention <laughs> to that. Uh, we're not as professional as that host over there. Uh, uh, and yeah. so Sean mentioned, it, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the Angular documentation covers it in ng module under co configure core services with core module for root is what we were just talking about. So uh, I'll have to go read up on that some more because I didn't know about that. It's pretty cool. Uh, but, Justin, do you have anything else that you wanted to yeah, share with us? NGRX. Yeah, let's do a couple more. Yeah, let's do some NGRX stuff really quick. I won't go too much into NGRX, but we'll show the schematics that it does and sets up stuff and stuff like that. I love uh, NGRX. So let me uh, first see if I can get a little bit crazy here. And I want to. Th this double quote thing is kind of driving me nuts. So and the import spacing. So let me just change my environment really quick here. So talk amongst yourselves for like a minute, <laughs> so I can adjust WebStorm here. One minute. Oh, I, yeah, I'm pretty excited. Yeah. I, I think I was watching uh, uh, Jeff and Victor talking about this at uh, Angular Mix, and I love NGRX. And I think it's crazy because it's not a design pattern that's necessarily meant for every single application, but like people don't care. <laughs> it's, like, it, it's just cool. Everybody is, everybody's jumping on the NGRX bandwagon. Yeah, it's cool, but, but without schematics, it's uh, <laughs> very long. Complicated. Very long process. 
And that's the beauty. It's like I was saying with CLI, right? I don't necessarily think that CLI, at least for me, would be great as a beginner because as a beginner, I want to learn how to write all that code. And then once I've learned it, I don't ever want to write it again. But I, in the beginning, I have to like write it all one piece at a time just so that I can understand it. That's the same thing I did the first time I used Webpack. I had to write that whole config file because I wanted to understand everything that was going on and not just copy and paste. I don't like to copy and paste things into my code that I don't understand, which sometimes yeah. would be a lot easier than trying to understand everything that I put in my, in my uh, application. But the cool thing about this, you know, the CLI and the and NX is that once you've learned how to do that and you're familiar with it, you don't have to keep writing all that code over again because you just do the magic with the uh, with the command line and it's good to go. And so you can make the store and all the reducers and actions and you can set up all that boilerplate for NGRX with the NX command line. Yeah. Can you? Can you? I don't know. Let's check it out and see if we can. Uh, I hope so, because if not, well, now uh, we've raised the bar. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, file file a feature request, <laughs> or better yet, make a PR. No, uh, actually, we have Go that. Back so and let's tell check you it out. Victor, I said, <laughs> right, right. Get to work. Okay, so we're gonna uh, ng generate uh, ngrx. Let's name our state. We're gonna give it a name. Let's let's add some root state to our two apps, right? To our admin app and then our client app. So let's go uh, ng. I'm going to make, we're gonna, what we're going to do here is we're going to do some stuff with ngrx to generate these things. It's kind of going to be an assumption that you're familiar with what ngrx is kind of setting up and needs to do, because I'm not going to go into that. It's a whole other complex thing. So um, yeah. if, if you don't, if you haven't used ngrx yet or haven't checked it out or don't know about it, um, Go check it out and we then have, come back and play from this the, point on, right? <laughs> yeah, there's so, another uh, NG Houston with uh, NGRX with Brandon Roberts and Mike Davis, and they can go watch that and come back and watch it. Oh, this. perfect. We'll Pause it right here, know. go watch that, and then come back here and you, you'll be ready, okay? Uh, so we're going to create a, a root store. So we're going to call this app. How about app? Uh, we are going to target a module and put it in, and that's going to be apps. It's the the full path from the root of our workspace. So app slash admin slash source slash app slash app dot module dot ts. And we want to do a root once. We're going to go dash dash root. And let's say we're not going to, we don't want to set up any type of uh, object structure for our state here. Uh, it's just going to be like the, the root piece, right? Uh, we're going to set up the rest of the stuff up in our in features for feature. So I believe, let me find out what it is. I don't remember this one offhand. It is uh, only empty root. So I'm going to do dash dash only empty root. And uh, let's do dash dash dry run. This is a lot of fun. I hope everybody's having fun. I'm, I'm having fun. This is Great. I'm, I'm surprised I'm still awake. I've been awake for a long time today. But, uh, Wait, yeah, you've been awake since I'm all jazz of it. I've been awake since 4.45 uh, Central Time, and I'm on Pacific Time right now. But uh, whatever. And I'm, you're in the hot seat. That's fun. pretty impressive. And I'm in the hot seat, but, but I'm good. I'm ready <laughs> to go. OK, so uh, we're going to see right now, the only thing that this thing is going to do is it's going to modify the app module TS. Uh, and so it's going to actually set up NGRX a uh, uh, store module for root and set that up. It's not going to create any other additional of the boilerplate files for us because we've said only empty root. So all we care about is like initializing NGRX and a store at a root level. So if you're familiar with the latest version of NGRX, you have these uh, for root kind of feature for your store and then for feature, right? And you can make these feature stores, which are like a slice of your state. Uh, allows you to kind of organize your state together. So let's say you had, um, uh, let's see, we're in here. Let's say you had shows. Uh, you could do a, a shows as the name of your feature state, right? And it could be all the information about shows. You could do uh, one about uh, guests and make it and keep all of the state that relates to guests, like the list of guests, any type of, you know, have they been on or that sort of thing. So you can kind of organize that. Because one of the things you want to do with state is, you want to try and make your state model flat. Uh, you don't want to go too deep with the structure of your state model because then it becomes challenging with your reducers and all the logic that you have to do to kind of 
um, not mutate that, create new items out of that and stuff like that. So it's kind of in Redux, it's it's recommended that you try and keep it flat. And the for feature helps you do that because now you're having these like things on the same level next to each other, that sort of thing. Um, so we're going to do just this for only empty root because we're not really going to put any state that's relative in our app right now for that piece. So let's do that. Um, let's add one to our other one as well, our client app. Client, All right? Let's take a look at those real quick. So in our app module, it's uh, brought in the store mo set store module for root because we told it was the root, right? Uh, sets it up with just an, uh, an initial empty store structure object literal of, of nothing in it because uh, we said only empty root. It also sets up effects module for root. So this is for NGRX effects. Uh, we don't have any effects that we set up, so it's it's just configured right there, ready for us to go. It also sets up the instrumentation for the store dev tools so that we can utilize the Redux dev tools in, uh, as a Chrome extension to check that out. Uh, so that's configured out of the box, as well as the store router connecting module. So if you want to use um, actions and effects that tie into the router, you need the store router connecting module that comes from NGRX router store, router dev store. So it gets all that stuff set up for you, kind of making the assumption that you're going to be building with that. So it figures out outside out of the box, right? Um, if we left off the only empty root, it would create all of the core kind of boilerplate files you need for actions and reducers and effects. Um, but in this case, we're going to say we're not going to put any type of state within our app. So we just need the for root to get it started. So we're just going to do that. And now we're going to say, let's go in here and, and uh, build a feature state. And let's do one for uh, guess. So we could do uh, ng uh, g generate ngrx. Uh, we're going to, so this is going to be uh, guest. So one of the things that I've kind of fallen into as a pattern is I give this thing a name called guest. Uh, State model, and I give it the suffix of like state model, and we'll we'll see here in a second why that is. Um, and so this is going to be the name of our state, and then I'm going to do a uh, module. I got to give it the module I'm going to target, and this one actually I got to back this out because I want to put this in its own lib. Okay, so I'm going to create a new lib for it first. So ng generate lib. Uh, I'm going to call this Yes, yes, state, dash state. And I'm just naming, I'm just coming up with this moniker as my naming convention for how I'm going to organize the names of my libs. I'm going to uh, have a suffix of dot state, dash state for all of my state libs, right? But you can do whatever you want here. There's no, this is nothing specific to NX, uh, but it's, it's probably something that you might want to take on with your teams is kind of decide how you want to name these things to kind of organize your libs and stuff like that. Um, and hopefully, if we do this directory thing, you could almost have something where you have libs slash state slash, and then whatever the names of all those ones are, maybe libs slash UI, and then those in there. Can't do that right now with the schematic uh, for, but I think we're, we might be working that in. So, so right now, I'm just giving it this name of uh, guest state. And I think that's all I need to do. So I'm going to create that. Uh, I didn't show the other thing that we could do here is if I did this like guest utils, I could do dash dash no module, dash dash dry run. I could also create a, a lib that's not an ng module, but it's just a TypeScript lib. So it has the same index TS file. Uh, it creates a, a utils uh, TS file, which you know theoretically you could have like functions or other classes that are just straight TypeScript code. code. So you can create libs with just TypeScript code if you want. That's another option here. All right. Okay, so now I've got my my lib for my guest state. So now I'm going to do ngg ngrx ngrx. I'm going to do the name of it. I'm going to do guest state model. I'm going to do dash dash module equals libs slash 
s state slash source slash guess state dot module dot ts. Make sure that that's the name, guest state source, guest state module. So I'm going to add it to there. If I leave off the dash dash root, it's going to create it as a feature module. Uh, I think there, let me check what other options we have here. Let's see. I'm looking at the other browser that you can't see, so sorry about that. Uh, but this is, I'm just on uh, narwhal, nrwl.io slash nx uh, and check out the documentation there so I can refresh myself. Uh, feature, do, 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 module lit, da 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 da. Uh, okay. So this should do it. We're going to do dash dash dry run just to check it out. And we're going to see that it's going to go into the libs, guest state uh, lib, right, into the source directory. It's going to create a folder called plus state. And that's just a convention that the schematic does right now, the NX schematic for NGRX. Um, and then it's going to create all of our kind of core files that we need to implement re um, NGRX. We got actions, effects, and a spec file for that. We got an init file for the initial state. We got interfaces for our state model. Uh, we got a reducer and reducer spec for our reducer. And then it's going to add it to the guest state module TS, right? Look at all that boilerplate you do not need to write. That is right. Awesome. Right, you don't need to create those files, and you don't need to create the contents of those files. You can just kind of get up and running with it right away, right? So let's go ahead and actually run that. We'll jump over here. We'll check this out. Let's check out the state module first, the guest state module of the lib that we created. Um, I don't like the way this looks, so why don't we run in the, um, hopefully this will format this. I think it will, but let me just open this up really quick. The uh, package JSON file has a, no script, an NPM script called format, which we have set up. NX sets up prettier inside of your uh, workspace, and it'll do some formatting on here. So I could go in here and I could run NPM run format. Let's see if it made that a little easier for us to read. It might not. It might still keep it on the same line. I guess it does. OK. Let me just break this in the line here. Da, 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 da. I'm not sure why we got that red squiggly. I'll take a look here in a minute. Oh, I think it was red squiggly because the TS lint uh, wants to have it so so many characters long, right? The line. Mm -hmm. Let's let's just check back. Sees a maximum line length of 140. So uh, so that's why I was complaining on that. So that's why I went away. The is working now. <laughs> Right, 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 right. And see, I updated it, so we got the, well, no, that was from the schematic, but I think we'll, we'll have the spacing and the single quotes here now, so we'll all we'll be happy as we, as I add stuff here. But, uh, so we've got this uh, store module for feature. Uh, let me bring this up here. So we left off that for root, right? So it created a store module for feature in this module. Uh, again, that's a feature module for NGRX. It gives us the name guest state model. That's the name that we gave it, right? Creates a reducer based off of the name that we, we named it, creates an initial state based on the name we created it, you know, also sets the effects module for a feature up with the class for the effects, uh, gets that all set up, and then adds the providers for that effects as well, right? So you got all the plumbing ready to go for your feature module for your store, and we've added it to our own lib, right, a lib of an ng module that we've created. So it's not bound to a single app. We've got it in a reusable state and composable state. Now, if we jump into here into the boilerplate, right, we can see some of the things we do. These are probably the things that you might want to override when you're talking earlier about the schematics and maybe changing and, and ours, whatever. Um, maybe this is some of it. But basically, with NX right now, we, we have the schematic make the assumption that most of the time you would probably be doing low data and data loaded. So we give you some starters for that. Um, again, this, you know, Even NX. If you're not, I like the fact that it has the examples there. So I was saying it's not good to do this kind of stuff when you're learning, but I kind of wish mm -hmm. I just learned NGRX not that long ago, and I kind of wish I had this when I was learning it because I was stumbling through some of this stuff, and it just looks so easy when you do it. It's like two seconds. There you go. There's your state. <laughs> right. So that's the idea. I mean, the idea is that you know, it's, it's 
And again, it's it's something that we're trying to focus. We, we try to focus out of the gate for the enterprise development. And this is something that we see with a lot of our clients that these are patterns that they're doing over and over and over again. So we want to try and accommodate that. Uh, but then, of course, then we open source it on top of that. And now you have the challenge of meeting everybody's needs, right? So how do you balance that and kind of come to happy happy medium with that? Um, but I think that over time, as we get feedback, we're certainly collecting feedback and trying to adapt and, and adjust it and make it something that's awesome for everybody, right? Um, I think these things will evolve over time. But right now, the current state, this is what it does. No, no pun intended with state. Uh, we've got a load data action and a data loaded action. Uh, it sets it up as interfaces. Some people like to do these as classes. Some people like to do these as action creators. Sometimes people like to do these as creating these as constants instead of strings. Uh, you know, that's the cool thing about NGRX is it allows you to do it however, you know, it doesn't make any of those assumptions. It just does the core plumbing under the hood and then you can really kind of do what you want to do. The challenge with it is like, how do you decide what to do? Um, so with NX, it's just taking an opinionated approach to this and doing what we've kind of decided or what we've kind of started to lean towards in terms of a pattern that that we see is, is effective, uh, but you certainly can, do whatever you need to do in your own application with this, but the schematic will create them like this out the, out the gate. Um, so we've got our, uh, let's actually go, let's actually go to the uh, interface first, right? So we, we get this interface uh, guest state model state, and then we get the guest state model, right? And then we come in here and we can define our state. We, this is where we wanna start creating our structure of our state model. Um, I'm not gonna get too crazy into this. It's, it gets a little confusing, right? But if you if you lived in NGRX already, you're, you're familiar with this sort of thing. Uh, if you haven't, you're probably, it's like, what's going on? Um, so we'll just kind of assume that you already know that. Uh, and then if not, we can come back to it. You can come back to it later and watch this afterwards if, if you want. Um, but here's where like, I kind of started leaning towards naming it like state model or something else. Because if I didn't, this would be called guess, right? Or guess, let's say I called it guess. And it would be guests. And then I come in here and go, oh, I want an array of guests. Yes. Right. And then I'd be, it'd be weird. I'd be going guest, guests, right? Or tickets, tickets, or something like that. Uh, so that's why I've kind of leaned towards putting a, a suffix on there of something so that then, you know, I don't know. But that's just teach his own. You know, however you want to do it, right? It's still in your power when you run that schematic, you can name it whatever. But um, yeah, uh, so we can have, yes, yeah. No, nothing. <laughs> okay. A comment, want to say something? Sorry? Question? Did you have a comment, question? Nothing? No, no, um, not yet, not yet. I'm just okay. waiting for the right moment. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll, uh, okay, I'll be expecting it. <laughs> we can at least expect it, yeah. <laughs> right. It's, you know, I'm probably going way over time. I hope it's all right. Uh, if you want the content, I'll keep delivering the content. I'm, I'm fine with this. But what I want to do is I want to go, oh, well, I need an interface for a guest, right? I want to make a, an interface for a guest. So uh, export interface, right, guest um, ID number. Whoops. Uh, full name. String, right? I'm like, yeah, cool. I've got my guest model and I can use it here and, and I got that. But then as I'm building out other apps and maybe the, the back end code or, or something like that, I'm like, well, this guest model, I kind of want to use it throughout my ecosystem, right? Uh, okay, no problem. Let's just get it out of there. Let's uh, go to command line ng generate lib data models dash dash no module. Over here, going to data models, source, data models, class. Uh, let's just get rid of that. And that's, uh, oh, did I not copy that? That's not export interface. Yes. ID number, full name, string, right? Go to our public API, export. Oh, I didn't get I can get rid of this class. I don't have it. Let's export guest. 
Boom. Go back over to our guest state model interfaces. Bring this in from there, right? This didn't path, right? So I just got to go in here and add. With spaces and single ticks. Yeah, you see that? I know. But the other the other one didn't do spaces. Why did, did you notice this? This didn't do space. Oh, because I just typed it in there. Or, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I got that. <laughs> Fix it on apply. Angie Houston suite. Right, data models. So there's some the auto import stuff with the IDEs. I don't know why that, you know, um, dot dot slash it instead of doing this. Um, maybe because it was a TypeScript lib. I don't know. Let's figure that out. But see, so now I've I've said, okay, I'm just gonna make a lib to house all my interfaces for my data models. And now I can share that across these different things, right? So and it was really easy for me to do that. Uh, didn't have to make a decision, didn't have to use any, you know, developer challenge of oh, where do I nest that in a directory? Where do I put that? I just generate a new lib called data models and put it in there, right? And now I can be used across my my mono repo workspace ecosystem. So um, that fits out pretty well. Uh, init, right? So I need to init my state. So it has to have a guess on there. Let's just give it an empty array. Uh, what do we got? We got actions. We got interfaces. Let's go to our reducer. We got data loaded. Um, our action, actually, let's change that. When we get data loaded, we're going to get an array of guests that we're going to send through the payload. We're going to import that. It doesn't auto import that, All right? Ng Houston, uh, sweet. All right. Now we can go to our reducer and make this work correctly. So did I put that on data loaded? Yeah, data loaded, data loaded, guest. So payload. This should be erroring. Why is it not erroring? Oops. Yes. Right. This. Get that in line. So we have a spec file preloaded with some a spec test on that. We could align this in the right way. Guess at the array. <laughs> Payload of guess. Just trying to be a good Samaritan here. Um, ID one. Full name. So they, what's the command here to bring up the things? Control. Control no. command space. Control command space. Yep. Control command space. Take. We've created a monster. I know. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Okay. What is this complaining about? Gasoline for the time. Seems value here. Oh, I don't need to do that there. I don't know why I did that. Okay. Nobody caught that. Why didn't anybody catch that? Okay. And then, of course, I can confirm that uh, this is going to have steak on it, right? Guess. With that, get my unit test all correct. And then let's go into effects. I haven't heard the question yet. Is it in effects? We're, we're running out of NGRX stuff. Is that where your question is going to come? Um, well, not exactly. Okay. I, my question is actually because you're already you're creating a um, collection like the guest collection, and since mm -hmm. uh, in uh, the NGRX platform now we have the entity uh, module. And my question was is if there is like an easy way so I can generate. For example, if I create an interface uh, for a certain, let's say, guest or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, if there is a way that NX can generate uh, an entity, um, the whole entity uh, and NGRX entity things for me, or I should, I, so, I can, I, I'm do it myself. So right now, there's no schematic to do that. Um, but we're, you know, we're just starting to look at the entity stuff. So what we're referring to is the at ngrx slash entities, I think, is it? Uh, the scope package that's now available for handling. Um, I think it's like kind of CRUD operations around entities. Is that correct? 
I haven't looked at it too much. Um, uh, yeah, basically, um, it's you, you treat the store like a database, and you have uh, yeah. already created actions and uh, selectors as well. So, it's cool. Reduces so boiler. Like, <laughs> reduces boiler. All right. So that's that's a new thing that's out, and so um, it's certainly on our radar for figuring out how to incorporate that. Right. So we just got to get the time to kind of do it. But right now, it doesn't do anything with the entity stuff. So. Um, Yes. Okay. Cool. But uh, but I believe there's probably some issues out there to request it in, in on the repo. If there's not, people should add it. <laughs> um, but I I mean I, I mean I know that it's something that we're gonna probably be looking at doing anyways. But uh, yeah, definitely. Okay. So then we've got our we got an effects file that it's set up. It's got a a fetch. So this is our data persistence class, the helper class that comes with. Uh, the NX library, that was the stuff we saw with the NX module for root, is bringing in this data persistence class that has some helpers to do effects. In this case, it, it sets up the fetch method out of the box for fetching data. It takes in uh, the name of the action that you want it to watch for. And when it finds that, it's going to do the run method. You can hand it a function that's going to be uh, you can have a hand an object literal with a run property that's going to be a function uh, that it'll call to run it when it goes to, when it hits that. Um, and then you can write it an on error property for a function that it'll call if there's any error when that run function runs, right? So you'd use this for something like make a query to your backend and get that data. And then with effects, you it returns uh, action or actions or null. And so you would make a a side effect call to load your data from the service. And then when you get that data back, return an action of data loaded with the payload of you know, the, the data that you got back from your service. And if there was any errors in the call to that service, it would call the on error. And so if you wanted to do something here, um, maybe set something in state to notify the user that there was an error, you would return an action of you know, error message or whatever for the state, uh, for the type, and, and do that there. You have control there, but under the hood, the fetch is going to handle um, doing the individual calls each time it comes through. So there's some plumbing that it's going to going to do in there for you on that. Let's actually take a quick look at that. Uh, fetch uses the HTTP client underneath, right? Or you're not sure? I don't remember offhand, so that's I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up <laughs> so I can be we can be sure about what it's doing, right? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, it's fine. Fetch. So it's doing a. Um, it's going to do a switch map on it. Uh, Really, you're you're gonna put you're gonna do whatever you want it to do inside of that run function, right? So if you want it to call and make an HTTP call, you want to use the HTTP client to make a call. You need to do something else. You put that you write that code how you want it. The the fetch method is gonna handle switch mapping every call to that, so you only get one. It's gonna stop the previous one and, and switch over to the new one. So it does some little plumbing to help you with race conditions and things like that. Um, that's what it. That's what the data persistence library is going to help you with, right? So it's going to handle some of this common stuff that you want to do, uh, so that you don't have to be re rewriting this every time. Okay, so I have to implement uh, the request myself, like to choose the correct. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So you would come in here and you would do a a oh, call okay. to you know HTTP client. Um, Subscribe and then have that return an action, right? So whatever you need to do the plumbing to get okay. your data, but the fetch is going to make it so that each time that load data comes in, if there was a previous one running, it will switch map it over to the new one, right? So it'll cancel the other one. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's I got the, actually go ahead. I made a mistake because fetch I um, thought of uh, fetch from the browser, so it's kind of tricky. But yeah, yeah. We're saying fetch this uh, action, and when this action appears, then just execute this effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah and you know, I was thinking about that the other day too, um, and uh, that that 
that probably needs to be named something different, right, than fetch. And I think it's, uh, that was probably me. I, I think Victor asked me, what, what what do you think we should name these things? And I kind of gave some suggestions. So that might have been my suggestion. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I can totally see that because I think I think about that too. The, it's, it's not the fetch of the yeah. fetch, right? So it, I don't know, maybe a retrieve or, or a better name for that, yeah. Um, I think also this, but yeah, that's a good point. Um, and so I, I think there's also on the signature, you can hand it an ID. Look. Yeah, so you can hand it a, an ID property that'll be a function. So you can group these things by ID. So if your you know, load data was, uh, let's say it was like a load guest, right? And it had the payload had an ID on it. You could use this ID um, property to have a function that would return that ID and it'll handle grouping those calls. So if, if there was a, a request to load guest one and then it also request to load guest two, they would both run. It wouldn't switch map the one to the two, right? But if there mm -hmm. was duplicate calls for guest one, it would switch to the latest call, switch map to the latest call. Uh, so it would cancel the previous one, right? Uh, things that you would want to do to, you know, because if you think about it and you had something like, like a edit form, right? Um, or, or a search form, let's take a search form, probably make it simple, right? And you had a search form and the user types in some, some information and they click search and your search is, is a big giant database. It takes a little bit to run, right? And then uh, they decide, oh, I don't want that. I change my term and I click search again, right? Well, the first search request is still running. And then the second one, runs that they clicked on, but maybe the second one runs really fast and completes, and then their UI shows the search results, and then all of a sudden the second one completes, and now the UI changes to show the search results from their first term, and now it's confusing, right? And that's a race condition. And so you can get around that by every time you dispatch or, or you send off that request, you switch map that with RxJS to say cancel the previous subscript, cancel the previous call to the, to the search and start a new one, right, each time you do that. Um, so Fetch, what the data persistence library is doing is it's doing that plumbing for you. So you don't have to remember to write the switch map and do all those things. It's it's trying to be safe by default for you as you program, right? In these consistent patterns that protect you from these race conditions and things like that without you having to write all that code every time. Does that make sense? Cool. Okay. So again, again, this ID is gives you a way to say, okay, I want to keep them each unique by each ID. So if I have Guess one and guess two, they can both run fine. They won't stop. But if another one for guess one runs, then it'll switch that. Mm -hmm. um, and again, the schematic assumes that well, low data is a common thing. We'll have one in there for that. We'll have a effect spec for that to test that and all that stuff, right? Um, so then with that, we have our guest state module that has the uh, effects module for feature, the store module for feature all set up, and we could come in here and we could go to our client and say our client is going to, let's say our client doesn't have guests, but our admin has guests, or maybe they both do whatever. We can come in here and we can go to the app module and we can come in here and include that, uh, what do I call it, guest um, state module. And I don't think we have Yep. And so we can bring that in there, and then that's going to come in. That's going to bring all the four feature stuff, get that all registered. Um, I have no idea what we've done at this point, if, if anything's going to be crazy, but why don't we just switch over the browser and see really quick? Uh, the import is wrong there. You need to fix it. Oh, cool. OK. Thank you. Eagle Eye Ilya. <laughs> anything else you caught before I embarrass myself on the browser? A few things, but I won't mention them. <laughs> do you think it's gonna? Do you, do you think it's gonna run? Oh, I, I wouldn't bet on that. Anyone? Anyone on bet? I'm gonna take a look. I'm just time. Gonna, it I think it's gonna, it's gonna be awesome. I believe in you, Justin. I'm I'm looking at it right now. It's not running. <laughs> we got no <laughs> no pro, no provider for router. Um, so I think that what I needed to do is I needed to provide uh, I needed to provide a yes yeah um wait a second oh is guess is the um 
client module, the one you did with no routing, and then added routing for the store? Yeah, you can remove the store router connecting module, and probably it will work. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you're right, because I didn't add routing to this admin app, right? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, pair programming. It's not pair programming. <laughs> we got four of us on here, right? So is it quad, quad programming? programming? <laughs> Quad core. Uh, well, let me just add it to the other one that has routing, and we'll just kind of make that sense. Um, so I'll add it to here, client. Did do the import path right there. I wonder why it didn't do it on the other one. Okay. Okay, so let's switch over here. Hi again. All right, so our client app, right? I've got the Redux dev tools in here. I'll refresh this. We got our bacon up there. Um, and we look at our state here in the Redux dev tools and we see our guest state model and guests. And of course we didn't wire anything up to fill it with anything, but we've got our, you know, Stuff all wired up, right? We still have a problem in admin. See the router? Let me refresh it. Make sure we still have a problem. Yeah. So I'm not sure what's going on with that one, but uh, we'll wait till QA finds it. No, we can check the code and see what, what's going on. <laughs> My job. Probably, <laughs> probably the, the reason is because uh, in the router, it's it's, in the default uh, store, the router is included as well, the router reducer, and probably from and the, or maybe not. I don't know. It was this one, right? It was, whoops, it was uh, okay. the store router okay. connecting module, right? Yeah. Uh, like you mentioned before, that, I forgot that, that, that was in there. So. Yeah. I forgot that we don't have an initial state, because usually when you have an initial state as well, the router reducer gets imported as well. So. Okay. Yeah. So that right there fixes it, and uh, just for confirmation, <laughs> it's not magic. It, it actually works now. This is kind of a little bit of a pain here. I need a uh, a smaller monitor for presenting for these things. See, so okay, so we're good here, right? And let's just add some bacon to our console and more bacon over here. Bacon, 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 bacon. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think that's good for now. Anything else? Any questions? Let's have some discussion. Anybody have any discussion about anything, or, or are we good? I can't believe you're still awake. Not only are you still awake, you're still smiling. And it's been like, how long have you been awake? 24 hours almost? I don't know. But remember, I, I always smile, except for when I don't. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen you not smile. There was a, when we were at, you can stop sharing me too, so I don't have to look at myself, and we can look at oh, y'all yeah. too, if you want, uh, or not, I don't know, I can just be on center stage. Um, that we were all at Angular Mix, and, and Thomas was at Angular Mix, and I, I was stressing over something, I was thinking about, I had something on my mind or whatever, and, and it actually showed through my face, and Thomas was like, what's wrong, man, is something wrong with you, what's going on? He's like... <laughs> I'm like, I don't, no, you're probably I'm trying to help like, me figure no, your out. Face is showing it. That was what it was. That was what it was. I was like super it was my, yeah. helping you out. And he's like, what, what's going on? What's going on? You're not, your face is showing it. And I'm like, oh, I'm just deep in thought. So sometimes, but uh, I try to smile as often as I can. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a tricky because I was, I was freaking out too because I was going on stage like the next day and my demo didn't work. And I was like, ah, but I had something like I could have just shown what I wanted to show. But the cool part, was the part that I couldn't quite get working and I had it so close and then you came along and saved me. Okay. So that was awesome. You you saved yourself. I just happened to say something that triggered your thought process and you nailed it. Looks so. like we almost lost Rob. We lost him and then he came back. Now we have two Robs. And then we have two homers. What's going on, Rob? <laughs> oh, now I have one homer and one Rob. <laughs> So all of a sudden, the last thing I hear is Justin going, bacon, bacon, bacon. I was like, yeah. So I, I go to unclick mute, and I got booted off the hotel Wi-Fi. So <laughs> that? Right. I recursively spam bacon. I, I, 
I bacon flooded your network. You DDoSed me. <laughs> bacon DDoS. <laughs> That's too funny. Well, I think the YouTube uh, chat has gone quiet. We still have a couple people watching, um, but I think we might have. Right, everybody left. I, I, I talked too long. Everybody's like, I'm sick of listening to this guy. Okay, one no, question. we still have people watching. We just don't. I think we, we slowed down the questions. Uh, okay, so if you guys on YouTube have any more questions, speak now or forever hold your peace. I, I have questions. Uh, I have questions. <laughs> all right. Okay, go ahead, Elia. Okay, so uh, is there a particular reason uh, you, why don't you don't include uh, the store freeze uh, thing from NGRX? Like so we just look at store freezes. Um, are you referring to Brandon Roberts? It's the store freezes yeah, you put up, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, we're just now looking into that. Uh, I think there's some stuff. Uh, I was trying to play with it the other day, and I think there's some stuff that you got to deal with configuring the router because the way that it, it runs into the router or something. But they show in the documentation how to do that. Let me look at store freeze. DRX. Um, I mean, there, if there's configuration you got to do to get it to work with the router, I mean, it's certainly something that could be part of a, uh, a schematic, right? And just have it automatically do that. Um, uh -huh. with NGRX router store. Uh, provide snapshot, during navigation snapshots. We, you need to implement a custom serializer for the router state snapshot right now is what the documentation says on ng store free ngrx store free oh. for the oh, router yeah. store and we use the router store so so there's some stuff that you got to set up with that right but again it, you know that could be something that could be part of a schematic but it depends on if it's if it's a temporary fix and it's going to get changed in a different way then probably wouldn't be part of the the schematic right because then we just have to change it but um but store freeze i believe is it, it it's a way to run it at dev time uh, yeah. that'll check to see if you mutated your state because the whole idea with Redox and it, is that you're not immutability, right? And you're not mutating your state. And that, that, I think that's one of the challenges with adopting NGRX, right? Or, or really probably the Redux pattern or anything is that there's a lot of spots where you, you, you probably, well, I don't know if it's a lot of spots, but developers have to be aware that like they don't, they need to make sure they don't mutate state, right? And I think it's potentially, you know, possibly easy for them to get in a scenario where they mutate state, yeah. right? And so that's what the store freeze concept is, is that it, I think it's this dev check that will throw an exception if somebody's mutated state, right? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. I was wondering because uh, either there was a problem with, uh, as you said, the router, or it's not used in the enterprise world. So that's why I asked you. So. I'll, I'll comment a little bit about how I've got it set up is I actually, um, instead of using something like store freeze, I have specific tests that deep freeze the store before all my tests and then run all the tests and it will throw an exception if I try to mutate um, the deep frozen store. So deep freeze will recursively freeze the state so that if anything in my test, as I'm running everything through, tries to mutate the state, it'll throw an exception. That's that's how I've done it too. Is is in those uh, reducer tests to confirm that yeah that, that that didn't get mutated, and then try and do that. Does it, I don't, I don't know those store free is the store freeze just dealing with the reducers, or does it go further than that? Because maybe that's a, a case where maybe store freeze might be valuable, right? Is it does it check? Does it have a way to check that beyond just that? So if somebody gets that model back and mutates it somewhere else, or mutates it in the payload, is that something? I don't know. Or is that something we don't need to be concerned about? If anybody has any thoughts on that, I don't know. Theory, yeah, NGRX sure. theory, I don't know. But yeah, right. but yeah, I mean, you know, you, you want to have your state changes happen within your reducers, right? And keep that there. And then everything else is like read mode after that, right? Or, or sending the payload that you want to do change and then reducers make that change. So if you're locking that down and confirming it, the reducer level that, that thing's not mutating, then hopefully you can form those patterns that, that are good practices, right? I think you're right. I'm still kind of uh, getting used to all that. So I haven't really gone through. I'm, I'm Veering in now to the uh, unit testing with NGRX. Okay. I got the NGRX. Now I'm trying to get the unit testing with NGRX. Have you done any Marvel testing and use the Marvel stuff? 
Uh, not yet, not yet. No, uh, I was, that's but that's cool. actually I was I was looking at that today and kind of trying to get it all figured out. And that would be a good awesome. topic as well for the show. Actually, yeah. yeah, that would, that would, I would not have a problem yeah. with that at all. And Justin, yeah. you have to come back and be on Ilya's panel, so that you. Oh, can totally. Sure. And help them too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It'll be fun. I'll try. I'll try to provide the same live coding support. I don't know. That was top notch, though. That was that was pretty nice. That was like I felt like I had the safety blanket the whole time. Like I'm never gonna go to the screen and show something live that doesn't work because I got somebody here protecting me, helping me out. It was great. I love it. Love it. Yeah. Okay. Way to go, Ilya. <laughs> no problem. You're always welcome. Whenever you <laughs> need me, I'll give you right. my phone. All right. All right. Next time I'm coding stuff, I'll just hit you up and we'll just we'll pair up and you can just like make sure I'm doing everything right. <laughs> okay. It's a deal. Cool. All right. Well, you guys are awesome and I would love to hang out with you guys all night, but it is getting kind of late. And Justin, I know you have to be sleep deprived. It's amazing that you're still standing and smiling and coding and you've done an awesome job, but uh, we should probably turn you loose and let you go. Did you show us everything that you wanted to show us for the NX? Yeah, yeah, I did. I think I did. Yeah, and then again, Victor's gonna be on. Uh, oh, look who showed up now! Oh, now, now he shows up. <laughs> really, Rocky? We've been waiting all night. We were just saying our goodbyes, and now you pop in. I, I was just about to talk about. I was just about to talk about the Angular Air episode that was coming up that Rocky wouldn't be a part of because he didn't show up, but he knew that he needed to show up his last minute, so that I'd, I'd have no way to like not have him on the show. That what's was going like, on, Mike? what's for? perfect timing. So I was got pinged by my buddy who was looking to start a new project. I said, you really need to take a look at NX. So I was actually on YouTube and trying to find him the link to tonight's episode because I knew what you were talking about. And I was like, wait a minute. That stream's still up. I have a link to the Hangout. I'm going to jump in and say <laughs> hi. Nice. Nice. You know what this reminds me of? I had, a, I had a curfew when I was in high school. And my dad had this big, you know, the grandfather clock that chimes on the hour? And the rule was that I had to be home before the clock stopped chiming. And I don't know what it was. It was like my stepmom used to laugh at me. And I didn't realize that it was a joke inside my house until later. Because apparently every time I went out with my friends, I was like, the clock is chiming. Like the last chime. And I'm like, the door busts open. And I'm hauling ass, like running <laughs> right at a full sprint, trying to get in before the clock went off. And she, she asked me one time, she was like, did you wait outside? until the clock started chiming yeah. to come in with the perfect time and i was like no i was running like right. as fast as i could trying to make curfew just nice. just reminded me of that story mike just making it mike, right under the mike made curfew <laughs> yeah barely nice nice I, hey, I have to be good so that i can get onto a future episode right hey mike we're supposed to talk to you about merging collections when's that going to be done huh about what <laughs> <laughs> Merging collections. Yeah. <laughs> we, we need it so that, much. When is that feature going to be available? What, I'm going to go off and the top of my head and say that's issue number 34. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we on issue like 1024 right now? We're like way past that, right? Yeah, and everybody wants to case. use all the awesome schematics, but then add their own. So they need to be able to, you know, yeah, I don't know. The people demand it. Justin put me up to it, actually. But what? I do demand it. I'm not I coming it. back now. You just sold me out. I'm oh, no, back. no, I love you. you have I'm just kidding. Back. I'll be back. Yeah. All right, so. You, you have uh, to go build the, some more NX stuff and then come back and show us, like, a, like in a couple months when you do the next version, you'll be like, hey, all the new features available, and come back and do an update for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so next week on uh, Angular Air on Tuesday, Victor's going to be on talking about NX. So you want to get more NX, check that out next Tuesday. Um, yeah, I'm still going to be up tonight, by the way. So uh, my wife and daughter, my daughter has danced late. She's not going to come home for another like hour and a half. And I, I haven't seen her since I got back into town. So we're going to be playing, I'm sure, when she gets home. Probably do a little Overwatch. And uh, So yeah, I'm going to be up for a while. So, But no, I still have energy, so I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, this was really fun. Thank you so much for coming on and showing us all this cool stuff. I, I have actually kind of been listening and watching with NX, but it was cool to to see like what it's for and how nicely it works with the with the CLI schematics, and that's all pretty exciting stuff. And also, speaking of coming up, 
Uh, Hans is coming on NG Houston in a couple weeks to talk more about the CLI schematics. Uh, so, yeah. So we've got a lot of CLI stuff, a lot of NGRX stuff going on, and uh, lots of and, and, and NX is just kind of like the perfect combination of NGRX and the CLI, and it all comes together and and uh, pretty cool. It was a pretty cool, cool demo, Justin. Thanks. Well, we hope we hope people like it and it's useful for people. We can share that with people and um, you know hope it grows with with people you know getting the experience of using it and figuring out some things that are could be tweaked and all that stuff. So yeah. Definitely. Okay, one more question before we wrap it up. Uh, the yeah. docs are the, the it's um, nrwl.io slash nx. And then if they have any more questions beyond the docs, because I know this is kind of new. It hasn't really been out that long. So uh, is there a, a Slack channel? Is there a Gitter? Is there anywhere for them to go if they have more questions beyond the docs about nx? Um, no, not right now. Uh, we have our issues on GitHub, right, that you can file an issue, but, um, you know, those aren't really questions. People do put questions on there, but it's hard for us to maintain all of those and curate all of those, right? So um, questions, we probably need a, a better channel for that, for, for just questions and inquiries. Um, so, I like to use yeah. tag 40 on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just tag Schwarty on Twitter if you have any I'm questions. I'm in town and around, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's, that's certainly a way. Um, but, uh yeah. Cool. Well, okay. So we will. Well, I'll see you tomorrow because uh, I'm going to see you on Angular Air with the uh, Stack Blitz, which I'm pretty excited about. And yeah. for the rest of you, we will see you back here next Thursday. Awesome. All thanks, right. everyone. Thanks for thanks for being on the panel and asking me questions and helping out with the stuff. I would really appreciate everybody doing it. And thanks for having me. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. Yeah. See you soon. Bye. Bye later.